Uh, frankly, this is very powerful stuff. And um, I wanna start real quick here just by telling you what this program is all about again. I got tired of everybody saying, hey, this is how you go build a perfect funnel. And I was the lead funnel builder at ClickFunnels and I'm telling you, most of the time, that's not the issue. Like I'm talking like 90% of the time, the funnel is not the issue. Um, the issue is that they don't know how to go actually build marketing, right? They don't, they, don't know what that, they don't know what that is. And what I realized that I was doing to this community, to every community is that I geek out, right? I go, this is my pure obsession. And I, by default was meaning, I was, I was telling people, you have to be my level of psycho in order to be successful with this. And I, was, I wasn't saying that, but I realized, oh my gosh, that was the message that was coming across. Not fair, not true. And so uh, anyway, I wanna walk through with you guys uh, um, the most important aspect of all this stuff, okay? Because we got the core offer funnel team, we got the funnel team is gonna go put all the stuff together for you, which is awesome, and that's sexy, and it's amazing, and you're gonna get lifelong assets from this program, which is very exciting. But the piece that is 100% on your shoulders, right? Um, that's what I wanna walk through with you guys today, okay? I uh, when you know I was growing up, I'm I'm the oldest of six kids, and uh, when I was growing up, we lived in uh, Littleton, Colorado. And uh, when I lived in Littleton, Colorado, I don't know where you guys are all from. In fact, I'd love to know where you guys are actually are from. Um, but uh, I remember growing up, my my dad had me be the yard manager, and I told a little bit of this at uh, at Offer Mind, um, which by the way was just an awesome event. And so I'm excited to. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna go do it again. But uh, anyway, so I, I was the I was the I was the obvious choice to be the yard manager, meaning I, I, I answered for all blades of grass. I answered for every weed. I answered for every, right? I was the, I was where the buck stopped. And um, I remember we had this tree and the trees didn't do very well. There are these apple trees. Um, we planted these two apple trees uh, up on the side of the yard. It wasn't this massive yard, but it wasn't small either. It was a good size. And um, uh, this tree, I remember the first time we planted these trees, they looked pretty sickly. All right. And they, these apple trees, they didn't really make much fruit. And what happened is, uh, so we plant these trees and I remember some time goes by, right? This first season goes by and, uh, you know, they're just taking root. And so the season goes by, they don't really produce much fruit. And that, that's kind of expected, right? There's a brand new tree. They're not going to make a lot of apples. I mean, they were as tall as I was. They weren't that big. Well, the next season, they are supposed to produce some fruit, right? And so, but they didn't. And I was looking at these trees. I was like, how come these trees are not producing all this fruit? And, um, and my mom, incredible mother, right? Um, she made me, <laughs> uh, incredible mom, but she, she likes to take these apples, which are not that awesome for like just straight eating, but they're like crazy good in apple pies and stuff, right? She wanted to go take these apples and, um, there were, there weren't a lot of them. So I remember this one season, I was looking at these apple trees and these apple trees, I'm looking at these things and I realized that there were tons of shoots. There were so many shoots. There was the base, right? But then there were just like tons. There were like two or three or four main big trunks, you know, parts of the trunk branching off. But then off of it were just like tons of these mini shoots all over. I mean, there were literally, I mean, there had to have been like a hundred of these things. Not like no joke. Okay. Of these little tiny shoots, 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 right. And I started looking at it and I started realizing, I was like, oh my gosh, like, wait a second. This, this is why it's not producing fruit. It's got too many startups. <laughs> So what I did is I went through and I broke off every single shoot from this apple tree that season at the end of the, you know, as, as we started transitioning into fall and I took off every single one of these shoots and I broke them off and I pruned the tree back. So it was only these main pieces with like a couple shoots, right? And what happened next year was crazy. Okay. We go through winter and it's Colorado. So Colorado, it snows like crazy, snows all over the place. And it, it's a lot of fun, but it's, it's, it's very snowy, right? And people get snowed in sometimes. And I, I miss that, frankly. It's one thing I don't like about Boise. I miss the snow. I mean, real snow, right? Lots of feet of snow. And um, uh, anyway, so the winter goes by and I'm, I, you know, every once in a while I kind of glance at these trees, wondering how they're doing out there. And I go shake off the snow from them and spring comes along and starts to warm up. And I love spring. Spring's like one of my favorite times ever. I love those transitions between all seasons. But anyway, I, I, I go and I start 
going back out to these trees and I, and I look to see and those shoots are off obviously and I go and I break off the little buds where it's trying to grow additional ones and by the end of that season there were so many apples that it was breaking the tree <laughs> There were so many apples that this tree could not handle the amount of fruit. It is shocking to me how many apples were sitting on this thing. And the weight of it brought down all the branches and it was almost snapping every single branch. I was like, holy crap, why did this happen? And I remember after we learned that, I pruned everything in the yard. <laughs> and I got maybe a little prune happy, but I started cutting back and chopping everything. And the next year after that was just like this incredible yard. And, uh, and there's a lesson with that. And it sounds obvious, but I'm bringing this at the very beginning of Offer Lab to tell you that you gotta prune. Prune the shoots, all right? I have coached so many people in this. I'm, I'm nearing 30,000 people, all right? And what happens is when I teach these principles, as it should, it stimulates the mind. And the mind goes, oh my gosh, I could do this and 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 this, this shoot, this shoot, this shoot, this shoot. And I go to all these shoots. And what's the problem with that? None of them grow and the tree doesn't produce any fruit and you don't get anywhere. Okay. And so this whole program, like I understand that what I'm teaching is dead sexy and it is 100% like real, it works. You've got to prune. You have to prune. Okay. I want you to do offer lab with one idea. You need one trunk. That's it. Don't think like, Hey, I'm going to do this one in offer lab, but I'm going to go do all these other shoots as well. The side doesn't work like that. Okay. Now I'll tell you right now, I do a little bit more of that, but it's only because I have a team right? I have a team. I'm not the only one doing all my stuff. Um, I don't have like, and I've, I've done this a lot, right? I've, a lot, way more than the average person, right? There's probably like three other people on the planet that have done this as much as I have. Okay. And it's not to be like, Ugh! but it's the reality. And that's why I'm saying that. Okay. So, so please lean into the fact that it's very hard to be pulling this off when you're going to be like, shoot, 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 shoot. And I remember, um, I, I invited a few, a few personal friends that are struggling to offer mind. Okay. And I said, why don't you come to offer mind? And, and they are probably on idea six or seven, which is understandable, no judgment, where we've all been there, right? And you, you probably have as well. And they, they came to offer mine and I was like, oh, that'd be cool. I know you're working on that idea. Come on in, learn the stuff from offer mine and start to apply the things and you will make more money, right? And so what I did was I reached back out to them once the event was over, I had to go. They're like, good, but now we're doing this and we're doing this and we do this. I was like, no, we're at the shoots. Stop. Stop. What are you doing? Right? Cut that crap out. Literally to make a decision means to cut away all their options. That's the actual, that's what the word means. It actually means to cut away all other options. Decide what the one thing will be. Anyway, I don't want to just keep beating that, but that's the, that's the reality of this thing. You don't, you're not going to make it. If you come into this program and you get like, bam, 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 one idea. Now I'm not saying that in like halfway through, you're like, you know what? I actually want to go do this other idea. That's okay. That's very much okay. Okay. That happens to me all the time. <laughs> we just course correct and we make a pivot. Okay. But I'm just telling you this program is going to have, it's going to be very challenging if you have tons of things you're trying to do at once. And if you're pivot, 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 pivot. All right. So why we don't give you guys access to the offer lab, like the offer lab funnel, like the offer core offer factory immediately is because I want you guys to go through the brain stimulating process that goes on during these first six weeks so that you can self identify. It's not up to me to know what all of the shoots are you're going after. Okay. I want to help you know, and I, I want to know what that one thing is that you're going after and go through the six weeks of like the yes, no good, bad. Here we are. There we are. And that's okay. But you need to go through that because you can build one funnel with my core offer team because there's a lot of hard costs, okay? So it's one funnel. And because of that, and I'm not trying to bring anxiety to it, I just want you to know like that's why we pull it back for a little while is because I want you to go through this process, go through the content, go piece by piece, put horse blinders on. We've I took a lot of stuff out of the members area, okay? We chopped a bunch out. Okay? And it's because I want you to stay focused and all we're doing these first six weeks again is helping you identify what those inputs are going to be, which I'll, I'll definitely deliver those to you later, okay? What those inputs are that we're actually moving towards. And once you know what those are, then we can start pruning, okay? 
and, and actually figuring out what that idea is and then go dump them into the top of the core offer factory and pop out an amazing funnel and then start working on your campaigns and put those pieces together and uh, just very exciting. So anyway, uh, hopefully it made sense and uh, hopefully a little more context on why we're doing what we are. So um, the whole purpose, everything I want you guys to focus on right now, the only thing I want you to move forward to is um, only do, just do uh, one thing, one funnel, okay? And only focus on one module at a time. They're in an, the order they are for a specific reason. A lot of thought went into even the order of those modules. I shiver at the thought that I'm making you consume more info. Okay, but you do have to have more info to kind of create some of these inputs. But I promise you that this will not be a death by next video syndrome kind of course, okay? Uh, so the things we put in there is with a lot of intent, it's not to waste your time. I'm a time Nazi, I hate feeling like my time's been wasted. I hate it. Um, <laughs> uh, and I don't want that. So um, just know that I'm being respectful of your time. And anyways, that's kind of how this goes forward. So, all right, you guys. Seriously, so many shoots. Prune the shoots. <laughs> yeah, prune the shoots, 100%. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, guys, cool. We have 40-ish of you guys on right now. Uh, very cool. What I want to do today and the point of my training is to kind of show you the end result of what we're going for. So I'm actually going to sh be sharing my screen here soon. Uh, actually, with that, let me pull up a few things here. Um, what I'm going to do is I want to share with you a full-length presentation funnel. Okay, And the reason I want you to see this is because I think there's a lot of things that I do and Russell does that maybe just people don't know about. And it's not that I'm not trying to keep them back and hold them tight and say, you can't ever see this. It, that's not it at all. Um, I think that people just haven't seen it. And so uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to share with you the... Um, I'm going to share with you a uh, what, what, what we call the perfect presentation funnel. But I'm also going to share with you the perfect presentation that's really what the funnel is. That's what that's the thing that causes the sale. So uh, that's what today is. I'm going to walk through that with you guys and uh, move forward. Um, uh, I don't quite under know how long this will be. <laughs> I would rather go deep. And um, all these videos, by the way, will be they're always ripped. Um, uh, we found a way to have them be at high quality too now, which is awesome. So it's not like the Facebook quality anymore. But we'll definitely take those. They'll be put inside the members area. Um, each of my sessions here. And uh, yeah, you guys excited? This will be really cool. It's very powerful stuff that we're going to go through here. So, yeah. <laughs> Prune the shoots. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, cool. All right, let's go ahead and let's dive on into this here. So, uh, let me open up a new tab. And um, actually, you know, I'm not going to do that yet. I want to share with you. Um, let me open up Paintbrush here. Oh, sorry, I mean, let me open up with you. Let's open up a uh, Illustrator. Yeah! <laughs> Take your time. Love it, Chris. Awesome. Good to see Jeremy. What's up, guys? Awesome, awesome. Okay, here we go. Let me get this stuff moving. And we'll keep going here. Okay. Okay, now uh, the reason I want to do this again is uh, so that you guys can see how much goes into putting this in here. And again, it's not a paintbrush. Are we in OFA? <laughs> you know what's funny is my paintbrush isn't opening. It says there's an error for some reason. It can't open. So I'm going to do Adobe Illustrator instead. I know, leveling up. <laughs> leveling. Okay, here we go. Share the screen. And let me show the entire screen. Boom, there we go. Okay. So, you guys got this here in front of you. Um, took me about an hour yesterday or ish to delete lots of stuff from my desktop. So, that's the cleanest it's been forever. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys, um, there are a lot of things that go into making this happen, right? And, um, uh, before we even start creating the presentation funnel itself. Now, uh, where this comes from is a, a lot of trial and error, right? I ran the fat event for ClickFunnels for almost a year. And then once, once I said I was leaving, 
Russell didn't want to keep doing it himself, so they shut down the event. <laughs> That's why I shut down the event. And I knew that it was one of the most powerful, advantageous things that ClickFunnels was doing to get people fast results. And I wanted to bring it back, but with lessons from what was going on over there, right? And it's not a knock, it's just the reality. And so that's why the Offer Lab event exists. And that's why it's three days. Uh, I took the things from the fat event that were the most impactful, we put it into the Offer Lab event, and then I added in things that I wish someone would have helped me have when I was starting this. So that, that's, uh, first of all, uh, hope I will be sending out an RSVP form soon for, um, uh, for Offer Lab, the actual event. If you can't make these dates, that's okay. There's others, okay? And uh, that's what I want you to know as well. Um, anyway, okay, so let's check this out. So the, w w what's what's the first thing that we walk through here? And I got you guys' comments here over on the side still too. What's the first thing that we should think about when we create any new product? It's gonna be highly interactive here. Right, Jeremy said, now, which shoots do you prune? Yeah, right, totally, yeah. And this should help you moving forward here. And this this one question actually should, should help you do that. I'm gonna be very interactive with you guys on this because um, I think teaching is best done with questions, not sermonizing. Um, so what is the first question we should ask, right, whenever we're starting a new product? I know there's totally a lag in the internet, which is kind of annoying, so I'm... <laughs> There might be a little bit where I kind of lead it and guide it before I see you guys' comments come in. <laughs> okay. Market, history, the who, positioning, who our customer is, the audience. Love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So I, I, I wager just one other piece with this. Okay. It's actually, yeah, who we're going to sell, who we're looking to serve. Yeah, exactly. And you guys are, there's one more thing right before that that I always want to look for. And uh, it's actually this one question right here. Okay. I mean, uh, Get my tool set up here so it's a little bit easier in the future. So we go forward on this. Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Sweet. How much do I want to make? How much do you want to make? Now that, that might sound like a an obvious question, but most entrepreneurs, uh, and, and again, I'm never knocking anybody just so you know, and I'm not talking about anyone specific. I bring that up because sometimes people say like, are you talking about being on the call? Like, no, 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 not at all. Um, I'm just saying a lot of times we don't know that that is malleable, okay? That is decidable, okay? With this program, I was like, you know how much stuff we're gonna toss into this? And the price was actually gonna go up, okay? We're gonna have the price be much higher it's just, it's a lot, okay? I know I'm providing a lot of stuff. And so ask yourself, okay, if you already have a product in mind, I know I know a lot of you guys already have a product in mind. I know a lot of you guys are here with trying to figure out a product. But before you do anything product-wise, you gotta know what it's actually worth it to you to make it worth going through what, what you're about to go through. Funny enough, it took the same amount of work and focus and dedication for me to create the offer for Offer Lab, which is 25 grand, as it does for me to go create something that's of a low front end that's like 12 bucks. Okay? It's the reason why we have you guys start in the middle of the value ladder, hopefully, right? And that's what you guys are doing, starting with something because it takes around, the, funny enough, around the same amount of effort. So how much do you wanna get paid? So I want you to sit back and just think about this, say like, how much do I want to get paid in order to provide that result? Now, I say, what I mean is per product. What is the price per unit that you would want to get paid to do the work that you're about to go do? And I know a lot of you guys are in a lot of stuff. Some of you guys are in supplements, some of you guys are retail, some of you guys are info, some of you guys are coaches, some of you guys are software. Like, it doesn't matter. But figure out, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, anyway, um, how much do I want to make? And think about that. It's actually very... And the reason why I, I bring this up is because... Um, in fact, there's some wise people who mentioned that to me. And they said, well, Stephen, like... I mean, you're doing all this stuff, like, how much do you want to make? And I don't know why, but it was for the first time in my life, and I was like, oh, crap, like, I should, I actually can choose that. I can choose that just by choosing it, right? Then I find the product and the solutions and the market that I want and the, the dream customer of who I want to serve and all these pieces with it. And, and it gets a lot easier moving forward like that. Um, and... Uh, 
Anyway, hopefully that, 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 that helps. So think through again, how much do you want to make? And, and again, it's much more malleable than you might realize. And if you're like, everybody in my market is selling for this price, that's okay. That's what we're talking about right now. We can talk about that later. How much you want to make? I'll tell you that my goal is to be able to buy consistently. You know, I want to buy like 20 houses a year at least <laughs> okay, uh, uh, that are that are assets. And so I look to see like, hey, what are those price points? How much do I need to make in order to go do that? Who would be willing to spend that kind of money? Am I willing to over deliver for that price point? What would it cost? And, and when you think about it that way, it's cool how many decisions kind of get made for you and you realize like, oh man, this is actually an easier game than uh, than I'm making it, okay? And yeah, hopefully that, 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 that helps. Okay, how much do I wanna make? Um, I remember the first time we ever launched the first two comic Cup coaching program. That's the first question he that Russell went through. It wasn't the offer. It wasn't the sales message. We'd already kind of gone through that a little bit. It wasn't really the funnel. He stood up and he said, I don't really want to provide what we're considering providing. Cause we hadn't figured out the offer yet. But he was like, I know that we're building the middle of the value ladder. I, I don't really want to go until he's like, I only I want it to be at least 18 grand. And I was like, whoa. And he just wrote that on the board. And then we started coming up with an offer that was worth way more than that. And uh, um, it made 18 grand easy to sell. And he made a million bucks in three weeks, the, starting the very next day. And um, uh, so anyways, choose that. All right. Okay, now, now, and you guys are all correct, right? The things that you guys are all topping in there. Okay, now what we're, I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna figure out who I want to serve. Okay, the who. Who is it that I'm actually wanting to serve? Who do I want to serve? And the reason we go through this question again is so that you all, you all know this obviously, but it's because like most people don't decide this and because they don't decide it, they don't, it's acting weird. Uh, because they don't decide it, they end up serving anybody who has the money. And most of the time that does not mean they're a dream customer, right? Who do I want to serve? Next we go through, right? And uh, uh, here we go, right? What are the current problems? Well, first I go current goal. What's the current goal? What are they actually reaching out for? What are their problems reaching the goal? When you think of it under this context, it actually gets quite simple to create sexy offers. This is literally what I, you know what's funny is Offer Lab was created with Offer Lab's framework. I just walked through this to figure this out. Uh, figuring out how to sell it at uh, at Offermind. Okay. Um, what are the problems they're having reaching the goal? And I'm going to tell you one uh, something here real quick. There are two kinds of problems. Okay. And and and, and why Offer Lab has been such an impactful program, and why there's so much buzz around it. I know why. When you solve problems for people, there's two kinds of problems. The first is the kind of problem that I was taught in college, okay? What we were supposed to go do is we were supposed to go look at all these other businesses and all these other products and look at the competition and look at it and say, what are the problems with that person's product? Ooh, wait a second. What are the problems with that person's product? Hey, and then we had to look to see what the issues with their product, issues with their product, issues with their product, and then we would go and build a better mousetrap. We'd build a better product based on the problems that were coming from the current products, not customer problems. There's a second kind of problem that's more valuable. It has to do with the goal. I can go list tons of problems around all the marketplace products. It's way better to just figure out what they're trying to get after all and just say, oh, that's what you want? Let's not even look at these other products and just hope you get to where you're trying to go. Anyway, I don't know if that helps a lot, or helps at all, but there's two kinds of problems. One is a customer journey-based problem and one is a, uh, a product-based problem. You will make more money solving customer journey problems than solving product problems. You know what I mean? way easier to make a lot more money when you serve customer journey okay they're on this journey they got this goal and they say hey i want to go there if you start bringing into the lens all these other products that are out there i'm not saying not to do that but if that's where your entire core offer comes from from that backdrop it's hard man it's challenging because you can't 
you start making decisions based on what other businesses have made decisions on rather than what the person is just trying to get. That's why I went, and let me just tie this all in a bow here. Um, uh, when I, when we started putting together this offer, that's when I was like, how crazy would it be if we did build their funnel? Right? And what? How crazy would it, that's what they're after all along. How crazy would it be like, what, what if we just had people like, the same people that are doing my campaigns, what if they just came in? If what, Is there a way? And I'll tell you, there was not a way for a while. We went through a lot of scenarios to try and figure out if there was a way to have this all pull off. And, uh, and, and, and because I was basing the questions off of my customer's journey, not what is currently made available. I know how to sell what everyone else is selling. That's not that hard. Everyone sells a coaching program and then you kind of just die. You know, you, you know what I mean? There's not a lot of other solutions that are out there. And so I, anyway, big nugget right there. Big nugget. Solve customer journey problems, not customer product problems. Anyway, so what problems? What's the current goal they're going for? What's the problem that they're having reaching that goal, right? And then what I start to do is this is when I start to say, that's when I run to that core problem planner. And OfferLab's going to go more in depth with this. The members area goes a little more in depth with this. Um, I'm trying to go fast through this so you guys can see the context when I actually, because I want to walk through my, my presentation that I gave to sell OfferLab so you guys can see why it worked. Um, and that, that's what I'm doing today with you guys, okay? So the problems, what are the problems they're having with reaching the goals? Um, uh, what's the most valuable solution? My very valuable solution. Solution, there you go. values in the eyes of the beholder, right? So it's not, it's valuable to them, but uh, um, I'm also gonna say lucrative, my valuable and lucrative. Okay, so when I walk through my valuable, uh, my valuable and lucrative solution, it's valuable to them, but lucrative for me as well, okay? Um, there's a lot of people that I've done stuff with and they think that in order to make something more valuable, they have to keep discounting price. That's not true at all. Um, uh, in order to make it more valuable, I got to keep, if price drop is the first place you go to make value, you, like that's a weak offer. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, so we have, uh, my valuable and lucrative solution. Um, and then once I know that it's like, oh my gosh, like the stars are aligning right then I can go look at some other markets. I can look and see how, where they're going. Like, um, anyway, um, the current goal, um, I'm gonna add one more in between here right right now. You understand, I can go a little bit deeper with you guys than I do at Offer, uh, OfferMind. Uh, OfferMind is my public forward-facing event, uh, but with you guys, I, I am gonna go a little bit deep with this stuff um, with the intent of creating those funnel inputs and turning you into a real marketer. Okay, this is marketing, right? Where do they spend money for solutions? Okay. Now, the reason this question is uh, powerful to ask is that means we're only working with and talking with people who are willing to spend money. They know that money is faster than time because it is. Money's way faster than time. So since I know that, I'm going to spend a lot of money right, hiring coaches, which I do because uh, money's faster than time. Um, anyway, so... All right, let's dive into the actual presentation now. Does that make sense? So uh, actually, real fast, I, I thought it'd be kind of neat to walk through this same scenario you guys are in right now. Let's walk through uh, Offer Mine, or Offer Lab so you guys can see this. Okay, um, how much money am I willing to make? Now, can we all agree? I don't want anyone to get awkward with this as I say this stuff to you guys, okay? Like, oh, he's telling us how he sold us. I'm like, hopefully it's not weird. In fact, it's actually quite a powerful education, okay? I want you to see how I sold you. Okay, and um, anyway, I think it should be helpful. Um, so how much do I wanna get, how much do I wanna pay for this? At first I was like 18 grand and I started looking at the cost of doing the solution that we were thinking about and I was like, there's not gonna be like any money left in the business. Like this is a serious program. Like what What if, what if? I just kept asking what if, what if? Um, and uh, I was like, all right, 20, 20, you know, 24, 997. Um, I'll tell you that the we, we are gonna increase the price to 28 or 30 soon. Um, 
just for the same scenario, uh, the same reason. Um, so it'll probably be probably be thirty grand here soon uh, for that, which is awesome and gets me super stoked and uh, gets the person who comes in even more serious. Okay, um, don't be afraid to charge a lot because you're afraid of the price point. You're not the one buying it. Okay. Uh, okay. Little brain break here for just a moment. Boom, boom, boom. Move this all down here. Cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> insert evil laugh. <laughs> uh, I want in your team. Yeah. Well, we will let you. But we uh, there's a few lock gates. Uh, so what's going to happen with that? Just so you guys know as well is um, once we kind of bring you guys through this initial content. Um, there's some specific inputs we're having you guys go create. We will walk through them first with you. Um, and then when we pass them off, then we will give you access. It'll be the exact same form that we have you go hand over to the funnel team. Okay. Uh, it's the exact same form. You're just going to submit it to us first. Okay. And Austin and I are going to walk through it and be like, yes, no, good, bad, tweak this. Positioning's not very strong yet here. Okay. And, um, uh, that way, when you actually get to the funnel team, you know probably what they're going to ask, and you know what to give them. Um, anyway, cool. Uh, no, not weird at all. I've never been sold so well, and I would love to see behind how it's done. Hey, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Marlandra. Appreciate that. Examples are helpful. Anyone that takes offense to being shown what you did needs to get out. <laughs> I was happy to be sold. That is something I want to recreate. You had me at hello. <laughs> awesome, guys. Cool. Okay, so let's dive into this. So who do I want to serve? Now, um, I'm gonna dive into this a little bit more uh, uh, soon, but actually, let's just do it now. Um, I I know that I, wa I want to serve the ClickFunnels community, right? And it makes sense for me because I do have a little stature there, right? Nothing wrong with uh, using that a little bit. And so I got a little bit of stature there. So I decided, you know, I wanna go into the ClickFunnels space. Oops. I don't know what I just did. What in the world? No. Apparently there's a setting in... Uh, I can't see any of my controls. <laughs> what controls are you looking for? Uh, any of them. It's stuck on full screen. <laughs> Hit escape. Are you in a... What, Yay! <laughs> I just pressed escape. Y'all could thank Senior Colton for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Press tab again. <laughs> oh man, can the chocolate who get rolling on that form? Totally, yeah. And we're going to release that all to you guys very soon, definitely. Uh, okay, cool. So it's a click funnel space. All right. It shocks people how much of a techie I'm not. Yeah, I am a techie, but not how people think that you probably need to be in order to do this. Okay, anyways, so the ClickFunnels space, right? I was like, I wanna sell the ClickFunnels space. And the ClickFunnels space, I'm just gonna tell you guys a little trick here and a secret real fast. Uh, it makes you faster money to sell the wealth industry, okay? Wealth. Because people expect to spend money. If I was gonna go spend money on real estate and someone said, Good news, it's only, you know, a hundred bucks for this piece of, for this property, I'd be like, What's wrong with it? You know? Uh, playing with higher dollars, which is the other reason why like and if you're like, Steven, I'm not in the wealth industry, that's okay. But it is why go sell more expensive things to people who have cash. And you will find that because the dollar amounts are higher, you don't need as many of them to really change your life. Uh, which is really cool, okay? So for me, I'm just telling you my positioning. Now, I take a complementary stance with the ClickFunnels market, okay? With the MLM market, I take a competitive stance, but those are the two different stances, okay? Com uh, competitive or complementary. Okay, so I, what I'm doing is I'm going to the ClickFunnels market and I'm saying, hey, ClickFunnels market, I've built a lot of funnels. I will tell you that the thing that has caused success for me is not knowing the editor better. What's caused success for me is this other things like what? Right. And that was shocks people. And not only is it true, it's a great hook. Right. And so um, anyway, so who do I want to serve? I want to serve ClickFunnels people and I want to serve ClickFunnels people who have bought ClickFunnels, who have it right, who have tried to build a funnel in the past, who have probably bought some other 
some other program from Russell or myself, um, right? And I put some criteria on there. Now, what's the current goal of somebody who's inside of ClickFunnels? What's the current goal of somebody inside ClickFunnels? Uh, they just want to build a funnel. And, and my hope is that all they wanna do is they wanna build the funnel type that myself and that Russell, and we always barf on people as being the one that's the most profitable, okay? Build a core presentation funnel, okay? Previously known as a webinar funnel. Uh, if you guys went to Funnel Hacking Live, you know that Russell talked about that. We're no longer calling it webinar because people think it's like, and I know that you guys aren't that way, but a lot of people think like, hey, you know, I'm not doing a webinar. And they're like, duh, still do fine. We'll call it the perfect presentation. All right, it's the perfect sales presentation. Okay. Anyway, where do they spend money for help? How many of you guys came through the One Funnel Way Challenge? That's the first encounter you ever had from me. Someone sell him an Illustrator coaching session. I <laughs> love it. Uh, uh, part of the Offer Lab, a look into our model pricing as well. Steve reviews the current pricing model offer and provides suggestions. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's 100% what we're doing with those, as far as those inputs go. Before we allow you guys to go start talking with the funnel teams, we want that 100% going to be part of that. That's what exactly what I mean. Like I want to spot check and review it. Just You know, it's like you've driven a car after a while. Remember like the first time you got into a highway and the first time you ever drove a car. You get in, it's exciting but kind of freaky. And you start merging for the first time onto a busy highway. You remember that? Remember the feeling that you got? You're like, oh my gosh, right? Like, oh, and it's like all your mental faculties are in. Oh. And then after after a while, you're like not even thinking, which is a little freaky, but that's the point. It's kind of second nature. I've looked at so many of these that I can spot check them pretty fast, okay? So that's, that's what we're bringing you to here. You're gonna run through these forms. Austin's gonna take the first pass, and then once he's like, cool, I think it's gravy, I'm gonna look at it and be like, tweak, 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 change, 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 boom, next. And then we, once you make those changes, then we give you access to the funnel team. So it's the biggest chance for awesome success, okay? All right. Yeah, yeah, a lot of you guys came through uh, uh, one funnel away, right? And so what do I spend time creating front ends for? One funnel away. That's exactly why I do it, is I know that it brings people to me, and I know, anyway. So where do they spend money for help? I know that I've come through OFA. I know a lot of them have bought ClickFunnels stuff. I know a lot of them probably about funnel hacks. Uh, a lot of them, for, for, for you guys, I wanted them to, to have come to OfferMind and, and what the costs involved coming and doing that. I wanted that. Um, uh, anyway, uh, I, I wanted them to, if they wanted to, uh, I know, a lot of you guys are also in the MLM space, okay? A lot, of, so a lot of you guys came through Seeker MLM Hacks or the MLM Funnel or Funnel Hacks or, or I'm sorry, uh, Hack MLM or we got tons of MLM stuff out there. Um, uh, I know a lot of you guys, uh, you are publishers or you want to and you saw me do that, okay? Anyway, what are the problems that I know that you've been experiencing? So what I did is I sat back and I started thinking through what what we're teaching. Now, when I say we, I don't just mean myself. I also mean what is the community in all of the ClickFunnels world? What are they consuming? Okay. Um, they're, they're consuming all those products and such, but the problems that they run into, and I started running through in my mind, actually on a whiteboard. Uh, I was like, first they're taught this in OFA. Then they're taught this and they're taught this. Where are all the sticking points? Right, I was doing the core problem planner. Okay. Oh my gosh, everybody is, I know I always have drop off in OFA on week three, right? When the actual time to build the funnel. And I was like, why though? Why? I, I feel like we've broken it down a lot, but why? Why do they? And then I started thinking about Tim Ferriss and Tim Ferriss has got some awesome stuff where he says, you know, for a while, I'll just think through the moves I can make in order to remove the other obstacles. Just the one, if, what's the one thing I could go do that just be like, bam, you know, it's not even an obstacle anymore. And I was like, oh my gosh, what if we built the funnel? Hey, um, anyway, so I'm kind of going into those last two there, but like the problems reaching the goal, the actual funnel build, that's hard. There's a lot of, and you see me make fun of that in the presentation. I'm bringing this up so that when we start walking through it, you guys can see this, okay? Um, uh, to the actual funnel build itself, I was like, oh my gosh, check that out. Um, 
Okay, what, what are the other stick points? I'll tell you, one of them is publishing. If I can get somebody to start publishing, I know that the chances of their success are like vastly higher because it's challenging. It is hard. I know it's hard, especially the first little few times. Like it's a little bit intense. So, okay, funnel building, publishing. What else? What else? And I was like thinking through any every other stage I've been on, uh, like the hundreds of hours of stage I've done now. Like what are the st- – when I'm teaching on stage – because. You understand that the com- audience is communicating with me on stage, even if they don't know they are trying to. And it's with their eyes. I was like, what are the stick points? When do they get that stone wall? You just lost me. You look Steve, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Um, uh, their origin story. People really struggle with their origin story. They don't know what story to tell, how long it should be, if it's good. But Steve, I wasn't, I didn't have the from rags to riches story, or I didn't have the rags part, or we didn't have a scenario where my my dad told me no, son, right? Like like you had, and, and so they they will disqualify themselves. Like, well, what are the other issues? And so I started. Okay, uh, people don't know what to put inside the offer. Um, people don't know really what's causing the cash because that is not what causes the cash publishing will if you have the funnel but most people have not a freaking clue what campaigns are and that's okay again i'm not like you understand i'm just trying to find the biggest real issues people have on their journey to the presentation funnel being built slide creation oh that part sucks (laughs) it just does it sucks okay um it's the one of the most important roles and we're gonna do largely like we'll get your slides like the 80 percent level then i would go back and put it in your own voice okay but they're still gonna create like 90 percent of your slides they're gonna design them make them awesome make it look sexy and uh which is very exciting um but anyway um but the actual slide creation part that's like murder okay (laughs) i'll tell you what i do is uh I, i put these pieces of paper um, all around my floor. And you guys have all seen me do this if you listen to my podcast ever. Okay, so these papers are all over. And then what I do is I staple them. When I get it in the order I want to on the floor over there, I staple it. And then I sit in my in front of my computer and I go, okay, here's slide one. Let's go slide two. You know what? This needs a few more explanation pieces. Boom. This is all the stuff I chopped probably... 10 hours of content from Offermind. Since I needed to get it more simple. Um, okay, cool. Uh, anyway, uh, my my valuable solution. Now it looks like it's kind of hard to see that with the video that you're getting shown. There you go. Uh, okay, next here. So my valuable and lucrative solution, right? I want to be able to work with... Uh, um, people who are in motion right people are serious because i'm serious and uh anyway um so i was like well okay what if we just built their funnel holy crap uh what if i hooked them up with the same people who do a lot of my content what what if i hooked them up with the same like what if what if a huge focus of offer live in the future was about the origin story and then I started looking at all the patterns between everything that I've built and realized that it's only three things that I personally have been doing in the last year that has caused the cash. A lot of the other roles, here's what was happening is I'd go to these people and I'd start consulting and coaching them. They'd be like, oh my gosh, this is so cool, Stephen. How do I get someone to do it? And I'm like, oh, well, I mean, I can give you some good funnel builder names. And, uh, and it's kind of awkward. I didn't have a solution for that. And a lot of times, like, it just wouldn't happen. And it's, it wasn't their fault. But now they also have to learn the skill set of finding the right who. Like, that's its own talent. Okay. Finding, like, anyway, it, and it, what, ha- what would happen is sometimes, like, their business revenue could would be at risk for dropping because now their focus is moving from the business, which it should be in, but they're also trying to build this funnel, but they got to have some other skill sets to build the funnel. And it's like, it was weird. Okay. So, anyway, so build the funnel, do the origin story. What if I hooked them up with the same publishing team? You know, oh my gosh, what if I just brought in my Rolodex? And so what I did is I started walking through each people, each person in my Rolodex, talking with them and saying, would you be willing? I don't want like death by info. That's not what we're going for here. But what I do want is I want some actionable thing that everybody can do in there that's measurable so that they can. So then that's when Daxi, Daniel Perez, came on in and he said, hey, I'll give them my podcast launch challenge. It's really successful. helps a lot of people. If that's the avenue they want, really want to go marry and get into, which I believe everyone should, um, they'll go through my 21-day challenge. And I was like, that's awesome. It's measurable. They'll have output. There's something done at the end of it, right? 
and uh, uh, then I went to the next person, the next person, the next person. Um, so I'm excited for Offer Lab itself because it's going to be very workshop based. I will teach. I will go through a review. Uh, there'll be a little maybe sermon here and there, but like the the, the purpose of Offer Lab is to stop and do. <laughs> That's really it. Anyway. Alphabet soup, yeah. Encountered you before, but OFA has set a good foundation. Hey, oh, that's that's awesome, Jeremy. Good to know. Everyone tells us should be charging more for software. Listening to you makes me uh, wonder if we're charging if we're not charging enough. Yeah, right. And, that, and that's that's definitely okay. Um, that's okay. So, anyways, you know what's interesting about ClickFunnels? Um, less than twenty percent of ClickFunnels users use Actionetics, but it's about the exact same amount of revenue as everybody who's not using Actionetics. That 20, less than 20% revenues as much as like the other 80,000 people, <laughs> right? Like think about that for a moment. That's amazing. And that's exactly my point. Like anyway, we'll talk more about price strategies and such like that in the future. But uh, anyway, let's just get your core offer off the ground first. Anyway. Okay, so it's with this backdrop. This, this is what I want to share with you guys um, so that you can see like, oh my gosh, like this is how I was trying to position it. Um, so I am creating my blue ocean inside of the ClickFunnels world, something that does not exist, but there's a big need for that people are willing to pay for. And uh, that's that's how I set up my positioning. The, the ability to create positioning is, that's like the beginning of hooks anyway. Uh, okay, let me uh, let me pull up my slides here real quick, and I want to walk you guys through the actual presentation. You guys good? What questions do you have while I pull that up? All righty. Does what I want to be known for play a role? Oh, does what I want to be known for play a role? Yes, in like the cause you create, but not necessarily, like how many of you guys think, the, like the capitalist pig thing that everybody loves, like that is really powerful, um, but it's not necessarily like, oh, so you are the offer guy. Yeah, yeah, it just certainly plays a role, um, but me just saying I'm the offer guy, you know, that's not enough to make the sale happen. So definitely, and you can plant the flag and be the person that says, you know, oh my gosh, this is what I want to be known for. Like definitely plant the flag. Um, um, hopefully that makes sense. So definitely plant the flag. Make sure that the whole audience knows what it is that you're going for. Because that's kind of be part of the message that you go drop out there. Um, but does it play a role? It certainly does, but in the actual mechanics of mark like building out the message and the offer it's not as much of a role in, in getting any kind of presentation funnel coming out i think it'll be more helpful as we move forward also with this oh uh cool to see the process from your end obviously our customers see but interesting to see your perspective yeah yeah and, and what i'm hoping is you guys take the same kind of format and walk through it and say like hey this is uh this is uh, how I can use that as well. Can you give an example of a product-based problem? Yeah, totally. Okay, so um, how many of you guys bought a, yeah, let me think about this real quick. Um, <laughs> actually, this is a perfect example. You guys remember when I was sharing that video in, uh, in OfferMind? about that lady who created the sticky pad for the computer. <laughs> you guys remember that? And they're like, you created a sticky pad for sticky pads, right? She solved a problem around a product, not around an actual customer journey need. You know what I mean? And that's why it wasn't a very valuable problem. And they're like, why would I buy, why, why is this worth half a million bucks? I don't, I don't, what are you talking about, <laughs> right? And so she's like, no, it's totally an issue. And they're like, no. Um, that's a product-based problem. She made a problem around a product rather than a person who's trying to get somewhere. Uh, let's see. Uh, could you say the 20% Actionetics thing again? Brain exploded, I wanna make sure I heard that right. Yeah, yeah, this is what's nuts about this, okay? Um, and this is why when we go, when we, this is why we create back-end offers. Just having it there with not a lot of purchases will usually double the entire company, okay? So we're building the middle of the value ladder here, and that's the whole focus of OfferLab. 
because you need your core offer, right? But the moment we add something that's at least three times as expensive to the same audience, you can have like 20% of them purchase and it will usually double the entire company in revenue. That So anyways, we'll get the pricing structure and stuff like that moving forward. Uh, but uh, this is all we're trying to build. Um, so in software, one of the obvious things to go do is just add a tier that's three times as expensive as the next one. Just add the tier, do a webinar to get people to upgrade, which is exactly what ClickFunnels has done. And that move right there, usually it, it, it doubled the entire revenue. Um, uh, so like back, here's some stats as far as I know. Like, okay, so if we got the, when we had like 65, we, I don't work there anymore, but I feel like I'm a part of it, you know, and it's my market. So anyways, when ClickFunnels had like 65,000 members, about 20% of them were on the $300 level. And that revenue, if I could just show you real quick. Okay, let me just pull out my phone. Okay, check this out. So if we've got, uh, 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 so there's 65,000 people uh, times 80%, right? That are on the times $97 a month. That's $5 million a month in revenue. This is crazy, okay? Okay, $5 million a month in revenue. Then if we have 65,000 members times the other 20% times the $297 a month, it's 3.8. Okay, so it's not straight the double, but uh, what their focus is is to get people to upgrade and uh, stay on there because it's significantly less people with almost the same amount of revenue. And it, it'll, it'll toy back and forth. And there's been moments where it's past the revenue of all the rest. And there's moments where it's a little bit under, like in this example. But a lot of times, like, that's just how it works. That's why you build something. It'll be less customers up at the top, less customers up at the top with at least three times the expense of whatever your middle is okay and and you'll make just as much if not more around the same as a lot more people and engagements interactions and exchanges okay cool let's uh let's see how many problems should your solution solve uh, I, I, try, I try to solve like one core problem it's a great question i try to solve one core problem like offer lab it solves one core problem like hey what is the core of your business but then there's all these follow-up problems that pop up that are legitimate. Well, crap, Steven, now I gotta go build the funnel. It's like, oh, yeah, you're right, like, huh. Dang it, Steven, now, like, I gotta go learn the mechanics of publishing itself. Just, I'm like, oh, yeah, like, wait, I, I don't even do that, though. Why am I having you go learn it? I'll teach you the strategies, and the, but, like, then just have somebody else do it like I do, right? So, uh, anyway, <clears throat> it's a great question. Um, I stand on, like, at one core problem, and, and, and you see how I do this inside of the ClickFunnels space. I stand out and I say like, I'm the offer guy, right? And I stand up, I'm the offer guy. And uh, that's solving that one thing. So one thing that I'm gonna go do is I'm listening to a lot of the replays of Funnel Hacking Live. And every time Russell says the most important part is the offer, I'm gonna chop that out, <laughs> okay? And we're gonna blast that all over and say, hey, did you see how Russell said the most important part is the offer? Guess what we do? We're the offer people, right? And we solve that core issue. but. On the fringes, there are some legitimate things we also have to solve on top of it. Stand up beside yourself. Where did you hear this, Myron Golden? Um, me. I don't know, just myself. Um, been a long journey on my own self as well. Um, if I uh, if I am an MLM, how do I figure out how to complement the big players in MLM like you or affiliate marketing? Those are my two shoots. Can you can those two complement each other into one shoot, MLM? Uh, produces, okay, I have uh, one solution for 11 problems. No, I totally get it. Um, so, um, if I'm an MLM, how do I figure out how to compliment big players in MLM like you? Uh, the easiest way to go do it is, so if your stance is to become complimentary, not competitive, you're not complimenting me, you're complimenting the market. All of MLM. Does it make sense? Uh, so, you can see what I'm doing but if you base all your decisions on what I'm doing, that is a product-based problem, right? You need customer journey-based problems. Go go see what they're trying to do in their journey and figure out what all their issues are. And we'll dive more into that. Uh, I think more in week two, we're gonna actually dive into the, the problem, the core problem planner. So more of that will come also, by the way. Uh, Ryan Lester, oh, uh, basically 20% of your customer base is 80% of your money. You should always have a high-end offer for VIP clients or whatever you wanna call them. Yeah, totally. 
Yeah, right. First build that middle so that it kind of like puts the stamp, creates the ocean, creates the market. Kind of like I have that blue circle inside of ClickFunnels. It created the stamp. Boom, this is what I do. But I definitely will have things that are uh, bigger after that as well. Okay, overshot the numbers, but same idea. 20% becomes half your reserve. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, okay, cool. Let's go dive back into this here. Um, and I am going to open up my slides. Okay, totally didn't understand that before. Thank you. Yeah, oh, no sweat. I'm pumped for you guys to be in this program, you know. This is uh, not normal. Y'all know that, but it's just honoring to have you guys in here. Uh, let's see. Let's go into... For a lot of people that... Anyway, I don't want to get into that. Okay, let's go with... Uh, all right, let me share my screen. You guys can see how many slides it took for me to pull this off. <laughs> Okay, now caveat with that. That does not mean it needs to take that many slides. Okay, cool. Got you guys' comments all right here. Zip. Okay. And we'll pull this back across. All righty. So you see down here on the side, 473 slides. <laughs> now about 100 of them are not used. As I was going through, I realized, gosh, this is super good, but there's just not time or it's not the scenario for it. So I dragged them to the bottom. So I got this big pot of unused slides at the bottom. So probably about 300-ish, 370 slides is what it was. But I put all my presentations in one massive shoot. I mean, it's, it's big. Um, <laughs> Core problem, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, making the sales message. I love that one. Um, it's the video, how to create the offer. Campaigns that cause cash, which I kind of got to go through. You guys are gonna get the full kit and caboodle though. Uh, let's see if we got putting it all together, which was not meant to be as long as it was. <laughs> There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes of pulling off an event. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, the who, boom, boom, boom. Okay. So let's walk through this here together. Why? Okay, now uh, let's go back to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna minimize this here so my computer doesn't explode. Boom. Okay, now thinking of this positioning. Okay, thinking of this positioning. Why would I have the picture be what it is? I went back and forth on this a lot. This is big. Who are the OFA coaches? <laughs> right? It's those three. And who do I know a lot of people find me through? What do I, OFA. So I was like, that's one of my favorite picks. So, and if Russell's speaking later, and, and what I'm gonna teach in this presentation, it is what they have also done. What rich marketers, I'm including all three parties involved in that picture. And so I wanted to create that, okay. And the headline that I created, presenting yourself as, uh, as rich, yeah, maybe. I don't really care about the status thing. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm speaking at Carnegie Hall in, uh, in two weeks here, and it is interesting it's a very different audience. They want to name drop. They want to, and I don't really care about that. Um, and I think it's bugging a few people how much I don't care about that. <laughs> be like, I mean, it's cool who's gonna be there, but like, I'm doing my thing, all right? It doesn't matter. I don't think Martha Stewart knows who I am, whatever, <laughs> right? It doesn't matter to me. She's not the one who's gonna hold the, the keys to my success. Like, I'm going to, you know what I mean? But anyway, uh, but I, I totally get it. Presenting yourself as rich, like, sure. Right, we're doing a lot in money every month, which is great. That's not the point though. What I'm trying to say is like, why does everyone wants that? I'm literally calling out the wealth market, right? You think back to this here, I'm calling out the wealth market. I'm using people inside the market that the, the listeners, the viewers know and have status with, okay? And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to let them know that like, look, there are things that they do. There are, there are things that they do that they do every time that is actually their success. And it's actually not much of the funnel, okay? Okay, and so I wanna say like, look, this, is, this has been true, this has been real and happening for 
um, hundreds of years. And so the reason the title became this is because I went backwards in time and I found all these other people and I said, hey, look, these are the successful people in the past also pulling this off. Um, anyway, let's 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 keep going into this with this with you guys. Will you start it with a big boom? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Boom, right? Exactly. Congrats on my success, bro. You're going to kill it, Connor. Go, hey, I appreciate that, John. I appreciate that a lot. I'm kind of nervous for it. They only gave me like, I get like two 25-minute speeches. Anyway. So, it's all about the B-roll, guys. I'm bringing a video guy with me. Bringing, uh, and we're gonna make the best of it. We'll do podcast episodes there. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do a lot of stuff out of it. Every time you guys are going anywhere, doing anything cool, uh, start, start taking that kind of stuff down. You guys will thank yourselves later. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, let's walk through the, the 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 major mechanic pieces of this of this stuff here real quick. Um, every presentation funnel has got five parts, right? First, there's the origin story, which is, okay, then there is uh, story number one, story two, story three, which is product or vehicle based. The next is internal or ability based. And the next is external or resources based. And then finally we have the actual pitch itself, which includes closes. And I say that because some people are great at pitching, but they don't do any closes. Therefore, they don't make any money. You have to close a lot. You guys see how many times I started. Clo I mean, I closed. I've never had a stable uh, stable. <laughs> I've never had a table rush. I've never had a table rush, period. Much less like that. In fact, Russell's video guy sent me a message and he's like, dude, I've never seen anyone do a table rush except Russell. That was awesome. You see how much I kept closing, even though people were standing up and going to the back. I kept going, right? It would have been a huge mistake if I didn't do that. So anyway, um, so those are the five main parts. So I'm going to walk through that here with you. Now, I want to give you guys a quick caveat with all the stuff here. If you are selling, let's say you're Jamie Cross and you're selling a piece of soap right? You're selling soap. Do you need all of this? The reality is like her five minute uh, presentation version of this is enough to sell it. More complicated sales do require more complicated sales messages. Okay. Um, uh, complicated is maybe not the right word. Um, more robust, I should say. Um, so if, again, like if you're selling software, if you're selling, so you get, what you have to do here is you have to understand that like, I'm going to bring you through the full length presentation funnel today on this training. I think on the next one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in tons of mini ones, okay? I want you to go through and create the full length one. Um, what it turns into is, let's say you're gonna sell soap, right? Or you're selling something small, or you're like, Steven, I'm in MLM and my product doesn't, it's not that hard to sell. Like when people see it, they love it. You still gotta sell it. Then what you do is you say origin story and then go straight into the pitch. And then on the next mini webinar, you tell that story and then go straight into the pitch. So you're whittling them way down, right? Then you tell that story and go down to the next pitch. And what you do is you create all these mini webinars all over the place that are five, 10, 15, maybe up to 30 minutes. That's how Brandon and Kalen Poulin blew up their thing with the thing that was only 150 bucks, right? They've got a 10X award. Uh, on a $150 thing. So did Ray Higdon with like a $150 thing. They use this stuff. It's not always a full length, hour and a half, two hour presentation though. And that's okay. What I want you to do though is still build the full massive one out because it becomes this huge asset for you as you move forward in the future. Um, and then you just adapt it. So this times actually, this has not been enough. And I actually have to go further into the sale because it's something that is a little bit more uh, robust, right? I need more of a robust sales message for a slightly more complicated sale. There's a bigger false beliefs I'm tearing down. There's been times where it's like five minutes. Now, a lot of my affiliate stuff I do with a small five minute webinar. It's still this though, still this. It's just condensed down. So you're gonna take this and you're gonna stretch it or shrink it according to what you're doing. But for the purposes of what we're doing right now, the flex, the, the stretch, the mental growth that you'll go through, you'll understand your market tremendously when you just do the full length one and then we'll adapt it afterwards. Sound good? Um, 
Uh, cool. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So, origin story. Now, before the origin story starts, um, there's always two introductions to every presentation. So, I need to go through the first pres the first introduction, where first I need to introduce the topic itself. Okay. There's always two introductions to every sales letter. First, you can introduce the subject, and then you'll introduce yourselves. The audience sometimes gets kind of pissed when you introduce you first and then go to the topic. They're there for the topic, not you. All right, so I'm gonna introduce the topic and then I'll introduce myself. Now this is a little different because they had already been with me for a full day, right? You were already with me for a full day. And so the topic's already largely introduced, but that's the reason why I put this slide in. I was like, let's put it all together. Okay, let's put it all together. Uh, we've gone through, first of all, more the dream customer, who's selling to them. Um, uh, the fact that you do need a new offer. Uh, where are they trying to go? The customer journey problems. Those are the ones you want to focus on, not the ones that are down here that everyone else is selling. Um, anyway, uh, and so that, that that was me, like in other presentation funnels, which I'll show you guys more examples of throughout this entire program um, of other ones that have done quite well. We're going to cross a million bucks soon of uh, secret MLM hacks um, very soon, um, which is exciting. Um, but it's the same kind of format. So first I'm going to introduce the topic. Then I will introduce myself, even though they already know me. They already know me. So I'm going to go here and be like, okay. Um, uh, and you see that I do that a little bit later here. And it ties into the origin story itself. Okay. This slide is one of the most important slides or statements that you can make in front of an audience. This is me declaring my positioning. There's two purposes of this. First, I'm gonna declare the whole goal for the entire thing. I'm gonna say, hey, look, you need that. In order to get that, which is really me just verbally saying this picture, in order for you to get that, this dream up here at the top, in order for you to get that, the, the like, the only way to really do is this like successfully where you have consistent cash flow and leads, which every business needs to survive. You got to build this core presentation funnel, right? The other thing is you need to go in and uh, you need to understand that the only way to do that really though is by becoming a real marketer through my program. Okay, so I'm, I'm saying the goal for the whole thing, but I'm also declaring a positioning. That's the second thing that's going on. This whole thing over here where I'm like, I'm declaring a positioning. And right? I'm coming in and I'm saying like, look, I'm part of the ClickFunnels space. I'm coming in and I'm saying, I, I, it, I'm not saying don't use ClickFunnels. I'm saying I'm an accelerant to ClickFunnels. I'm complimentary. Okay, that's very big. This is a big piece. Um, and so, um, is this helpful so far? Let's see, I've been doing a problem, agitate, resolve funnel. How does that compare with the presentation origin story funnel? Uh, you probably just need more story in it. You know what I mean? That's all I mean. Create positioning as well as the story inside of it. And anyway, th this will probably help us to go forward here. Um, I haven't always made like a massive slide deck. In fact, most of the time I don't. I just... Actually, you guys want to see what I'm going to be pitching here on... We'll get there soon. Never mind. I'm pitching on uh, next Tuesday. I'll share with you guys what it is. Let me just make a note of that so I can make sure I can share it with you. I'll show you how I usually do this. Okay, but when it's like a major core of my whole business, I will create a full slide deck. Okay. Anyway, I strongly encourage you guys, as you are creating your products, you got to be your best devil's advocate. Okay. I imagine, and I've done this multiple times, I will close my eyes. And I'm like, okay, I'm on the OfferMind stage or I'm on a webinar or I'm on a Facebook Live and I have 2,000 people on and I have on there 10 of the most terrible professional hecklers <laughs> that have ever been in existence, right? They are literally the spawns of Satan, right? They are the worst hecklers on planet Earth. And I'll sit back and I'll think about this. I'm like, what would they say to me in response to what I just said? This is one of the best ways to join the conversation that's happening in the customer's mind, right? Whoever's listening to you. What would somebody say if I said, you need to become a real marketer? What do you mean real marketer? That's why I put it in there. So I join it and I'm like, Steve, what do you mean real marketer? That's why that works so well. So you'll see me do that throughout the presentation is I actually join the customers, I join the audience's conversation that's happening and I just bring it out. 
Because I don't want though I don't want them to sit back with this question that feels unanswered. So I'm gonna take the major ones I know everyone's probably gonna be saying, the best thing, and I'm gonna bring it out. So that that's why there's a table rush. I'm removing barriers before they can even bring them up. That's why it works so well. So I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna say, we're only on slide four here. <laughs> okay. You guys I'm gonna keep going here, yeah? Um Okay, but that that's big. So Every time that you have somebody reach out to you and say like, oh, your product sucks or, oh, I need a refund or, oh, whatever it is, you have license to get pissed for a moment. That's okay. (laughs) But what you want to do is you want to sit back and ask yourself, did they just give me feedback that I need to change in my presentation or are they giving me feedback on something that they want in my future value ladder or were they just a jerk? (laughs) Okay. Um, But what you're doing is you're listening. That's one of the easiest ways to listen to the market and put an ear down and say, what are you saying to me right now? Let me take those things that you'll use as fuel in the future and I'm going to put them in the presentation to disarm you. It's like awesome stuff. Can we get a copy of the Offermind slide deck? No, I'm going to keep that. But you will have access to the Offermind replays. Um, Okay. Now that I've introduced the topic, and this is the smallest introduction of a topic that I've ever done, but it's only because I'm I'm, I'm mashing it with the Offermind uh, event, right? I've already brought them pretty far into there. Now, everyone in the room already knows my story, but I still have to tell it. And I get people who get cold feet around this because they're like, but they already know my story. They already know my story as well. So what I decided to do was to put my entire origin story in a single slide deck I bootstrapped my way to funnel hacking live, traded funnels the whole way, right? I wanted it. You imagine the pain that it took to do that, right? I was hired by Russell. Um, I listened to Russell teach a lot. I built a lot for his clients. Now that is the lead in into the origin story. When you introduce yourself, the easiest way to create the origin story, the easiest way to bridge into the origin story is at the end of your intro, like I'm doing right here, the next sentence is the lead in into the next thing, uh, in, into the actual origin story itself. I built some crazy cool funnels. It was awesome. Worked for some crazy awesome people. And these are some of the people I worked for. Why would I put this up here? Because that's a lot of social proof, right? It's a lot of social proof. And sometimes I get people saying like, well, Steven, I don't have that much social proof. You have some though. And even if you don't, that's okay. Like you can still tell the story without a slide like this. Um, it does help though, moving forward in the future. All right, and this, a lot of this is going to have some animation in it, so it might not make tons of sense moving forward. Um, uh, okay, so we have dozens of funnels for new entrepreneurs. We have dozens of funnels for existing entrepreneurs. We uh, we did crazy ones like this cool biohacker guy. We did um, we did five for Marcus Limonis, right? We did... Um, Just kind of back this up a little bit. So we'll, there we go. Okay. Now, the purpose of this slide is uh, what are people's conversation in the head going to be saying right now? Well, like, Stephen, of course you built for all those people, but I'm not one of those people. And I'm saying, don't worry about it. You understand this whole thing is a dance. Here's my objection, Stephen. Don't worry about it. Uh, let me address that head on because I knew you were probably going to be thinking that. Uh, and then I'll just keep moving forward. Okay. What do you mean, a real marketer? Don't worry about it. I'm going to talk to you about what that whole thing is. That's the purpose of this presentation. Oh, okay, cool. I built for a lot of clients, people. Well, I'm not one of those people. Don't worry about it. We built for new entrepreneurs and existing entrepreneurs. If I just say new people, all of the people in the room that are existing don't become interested anymore. This is a big slide. This is a big slide, okay? If I go in and I say, well, it's only for existing entrepreneurs, 80% of the room tunes out well this doesn't quite apply to me which is the easiest let out people have with sales in the buying process well it doesn't fit for me so i can't i can't i can't you know can't go do that well steven i'm not in the info product space don't worry about it neither was this biohacking secrets guy okay he built all kinds we built i built seven funnels for that guy right and uh a lot of them they're like these weird biohacking things you stick in your nose and stuff like you see what i'm saying um, five funnels for Marcus Limonis, like, right? And going back to a little bit more of the stature thing, but really it's a lead in into the next thing. How many of you guys want to see the process Russell and I go through when we're creating funnels? First, there's Russell. And he goes out and he says, hey, right? Here's all these clients. I use the same people to tie in the story. All right, then we would work together. We deliver the funnel. How many of you guys want me to build a funnel for you? Ah! 
I'm price anchoring them. I'm price anchoring them. How many how many of you guys said that you'd build them? There's a reason I asked the question in the day one. This is all orchestrated, you understand? There is a reason I asked the audience. How many of you guys would build a, spend a million bucks for me to build you a funnel right now? That was planned. The fact that I stopped and stuttered and paused and said, wait, how many? That was all planned, okay? <laughs> because it gets all the, and I start price anchoring on day one. Uh, when I went through and I said, you guys remember when I talked about uh, this whole event is about financial freedom. What does financial freedom mean to you? And I had you get up and stand up and come to the mics and say what that means to you. That was very planned. Okay, anything you can do to teach about money in your presentations, you will make more money. Okay, and so I made a statement. This is all planned. Okay, I want you to leave here knowing one thing. If you take nothing else from this event, I want you to leave here knowing one thing. The entrepreneur's dream of financial freedom is alive and it's doing well. And you can have it if you take the time to learn to get it. That's called the dreams alive. And it's a chunk from a very famous guy. He's not dead, but he was like 15 years ago, very famous, okay? Hey, I started out day number one by saying, now I'm glad you're here. We are recording this. This was all planned, okay? We're recording this whole thing. In fact, we're on slide 21 right here, or 213. Check this out, okay? Okay. Like, look, look at this right here, right down on the below. These are my notes to make sure that I said it the way I needed to, okay? This is, you understand, like I, I am I am hooking them all over the place, just price anchors, price anchors, price anchors. I want to make sure they get, that they understand like, look, this is not, you're not tricking the audience. But if the first thing they see is it's 25 grand and I haven't spoken about any price points except like a hundred bucks, they're gonna go, <gasps> okay? I gotta show, I gotta show that it works. I gotta show, anyway. So look at that, in my notes section right down there. Okay, this event is about making money through real marketing. I anchored at the first slide out the gate. Okay, I'm gonna teach you about marketing the cash flows, but really what this event is about is about making money by being a real marketer. It is literally a tie-in into my sales pitch the next day. Okay, are you ready? And you guys remember how I said this? There's a lot of pauses. Okay, I stand out and I say, good morning. And it goes, hi. I say, I, I know the audience is better than that. Good morning. I want them to be wrong so that I take control of the audience right from the get-go. I do that on webinars. <laughs> hey, how's it going? I said, good morning. Boom, right? I go nuts on the mic. Okay, that's on purpose for this purpose. Okay, um, are you ready to learn some incredibly powerful methods of getting people to do what you want them to do. And then it's literally part of the bit where I stop and I say, I'm trying to choose my words carefully here, which I said, <laughs> when you know, you gotta hook it back to knowledge, all things go back to knowledge. When you know the things I'm gonna share with you, you can literally abuse it. I certainly request that you do not. Pause, wait, sink. Okay, next one. The power to influence is an amazing power. If you use it for good, you'll be an amazing human being. You'll change a lot of lives. You'll be incredible. But I've also seen people use it to flat out sell. Now, I believe this, which is why I'm putting this in there. It's not just to sell, but it does do that benefit too. I'm selling them, okay? But I've also seen, and sell things they don't believe in. How many of you guys have heard the saying, if you believe in a product? This is all verbatim from a guy like 15 years ago, okay? How many of you guys have heard the saying, if you believe in the product, then you can sell it? And I had tons of people raise their hands. I'm trying to get them to engage and do and say a lot throughout the event. Okay. That's true, but I can sell things I don't believe in. You know why? Because I've learned a system. I've learned a method, a way of presenting words and ideas in such a way that moves an audience. Right? Then what I have to dispel is the myth that working hard works. Who here works hard? Keep your hand up if you consider yourself rich. Ah, wait a second. So working hard doesn't work. That's literally a bit called working hard doesn't work. Um, anyway, this is the reason why I want to go to other people's events. You can tell that it's not choreographed. You can tell that they did not put a lot of stuff into it. You can tell that it's they did not create an experience, right? And I, I'll sit back and I totally armchair quarterback it. And I'm like, ugh. Like when they say to me, 
well, what do you want to talk about? I'm like, no, no. I had Dana and Myron and Brad speak at very specific, concise times. Sales is this way. I'm selling from the very first slide. It's not just the sales presentation. And the reason I publish so much material, I am selling in every single podcast episode, whether or not they know it. Okay, this is in my bones, baby. Okay, my expertise is in a discipline called direct response marketing. And I'm going to share a lot of these secrets with you during this event. How many of you guys want to know that? Okay, now I go into the last bit. And this is very important. I price anchor from the beginning. Okay, we are recording this event and I start to pace around. I do a live event. I'm talking about Offer Lab. We do a live event and I'm supposed to record sp uh, specific chunks of that, which we're, we are going to take a few things out and uh, put them in certain places. I have, frankly, one of the most expensive trainings in America. Wait, wait, wait a second. I'm not saying cheap, I'm going right to the top. <laughs> I have, frankly, one of the most expensive trainings in America. I charge $25,000 for my direct response marketing training uh, called Offer Lab. How many of you guys are in Offer Lab? And I got social proof from the audience. I just sold them. Okay. Most people say, well, what's Offer Lab? And I've had people say, right, what are they going to say when they hear $25,000? They're going to say, oh, crap, that's a lot of money. So what do I say? I've had people come up to me and say, well, now that's a lot of money. <laughs> say, well, good gracious, if I teach you to make 250 grand, are you willing to pay 10% to learn how to do that? Of course you would, right? Be a direct response marketer, have a million dollar company? Of course you would, right? And I downplay the fact that it's 25 grand because it's not much money compared to what I'm gonna teach you how to do here. It's amazing. Anyway, I've certainly had people say, well, if you're so confident, like, what, what else do people say? They always say this. Well, if you're so confident in this, why can't I just pay you from the profits that I earn from this? Right? And I said, because if you come for free, you won't learn anything. You'll just absorb and do nothing. You absorb almost nothing. Okay. You know why I'm so confident in this? Because I've never taught anything in my life that works like this does. Okay. That is verbatim scripted. And I had a chunk like that in both mornings. And what it does is price anchor and create... Um, an experience, right? Then I went into an origin story and I started dispelling marketing. I need to shift the furniture in their heads. I need them to know that they don't actually know what marketing is. And we watch this story. They don't even know, they don't know what entrepreneurship is. And there's two worlds of marketing. There's two worlds of entrepreneurship. This is what I'm for. This is what I'm against. And I take a stance very, very aggressively on what I believe good marketing is and what it isn't. Okay. Um, anyway, so I'm going to go back to the actual slides here. But the only reason why I'm, I'm sharing that with you is because you need to know why I'm doing what I am with this. I, I, I was uh, selling them uh, from, from the beginning. I don't start the sales presentation, I just continue it. I'm always selling them. Okay. Um, after each funnel was built, the client usually did nothing. And that always shocks people. Okay, no, so sorry. Context, back to the story. These are the people we built for, Russell and I built for them, and after we built for them, they did nothing. Does that shock anybody in this room? How many of you guys know if I built your funnel, you would do stuff with it because it's good? Hands go up. Oh, man. All right. And we'd hand him the small list and be like, just do it. What's wrong with you, right? I had, but then I had to realize, like, how many of you guys think Marcus Simonis is lazy? It can't be that. He has good products. He knows how to work. He knows business, right? Um, you guys liking this? <laughs> this is... This is the juice, man. These are the, these are the deets. This is the this is the goods on how we actually do what we do here. And I'm going to teach you how to do all this stuff, okay? Um, uh, to varying degrees that you need it, right? Uh, we got frustrated, and I get frustrated because they're frustrated. We were frustrated, but it just happens that it ties in at a time when I know they'll probably be feeling that emotion. What? But Stephen, I want you to build my funnel for me. And I'm like, right, I know, right? I got mad, they got mad, let's be mad together. And that's me standing, instead of face to face, f shouldering up with any other creature in nature is a, um, it's a fighting stance. You don't wanna do that with your audience. You wanna stand to the side of them and go, okay, right? And no one knows what to do with it. So I bring it back to knowledge, like I did at the beginning of the whole event. They don't know what to do with it. And I said, in order, and I started telling them, there's micro stories throughout this whole thing. In order to have a funnel, we're requiring them to be a nerd, which is true, right? How many of you guys have felt that in the past? 
right? You got to learn this and you got to learn this, this is SMTP and follow up sequence. And now here's your publishing machine and has your content like, huh. so I need to make sure that everybody knows that it tastes like Thanksgiving. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, and basically know everything that we know. We started looking for people to plant in businesses. Um, we were building funnels for, it worked okay when we actually did that. It, that was a that's an actual screen gif of when we really did that. It was okay. It was a headache. Um, anyway, then I just know that that was that one time where we swore off agency work for just five months and work for ClickFunnels. Um, and instead, we just built a lot of ClickFunnels funnels, and we built and built and built and built and built. We put all these things together. Again, why why am I doing this? Because my positioning is me talking to that audience. So I just grabbed a bunch of the things that ClickFunnels has that I know I've been a part of, and went in and tossed it in there. Um, and then I grabbed. I needed Russell to come in and say, "Yeah, like you need you need a webinar, right?" Now people have asked me in the past, like, like Russell, if you had if you had to make money and you had nothing else, like what would the number one thing you would do be? And so I was like, this is a skill set that's so important. Someone can make fifty thousand dollars in ninety minutes. I'm gonna take some effort to learn how to do this, right? Anyway, so we go through that and why would I want to you have Russell's voice saying that? This is huge. This is like a proverbial pass off of the torch. This is a big deal. Okay, check this out. It's because he's the category king. And I, I it's not me saying it. He says everyone should build, which we know is true. We know by the numbers and by the stats and everything we've built for all these people and everything we're looking at. He's the category king of the funnel space. And he says the one that you need to build the most is the presentation funnel. If I can find places and stamps of that guy saying it, it's going to be way more powerful than if I say it. Right? Exactly. Yeah. He's the category king. Lots of authority behind it. Okay. Okay. So then I reinforce the goal. I'm like, well, that being the goal, Russell just said, you got to go build a presentation funnel. The only real way to do that is by becoming a real marketer. So I'm going to teach you guys more about what that is. Real fast caveat here. We're not doing the presentation thing any, or webinar anymore. It's, we're talking about it's a presentation funnel now. Okay. Now I need to, this is like the second part of the origin story here. Um, um, because I need to fight inside their head um, this idea that they know what a webinar funnel already is. And even though they already do, which is great. But I wanted them to know my journey on like I wanted to tell the story of my own journey towards a presentation funnel, right? So up until this point, I've set up the stage that they have created. Like I've set up the stage for the topic, right? We're building funnels and don't you wish we could build your funnel? And then we start building these funnels and we realize the issue with the funnels, they don't know what to do with it. I'm reinforcing, reinforcing, reinforcing everything I've said in the past. And then we start changing gears here. And uh, I know this sounds like a lot, guys, but I promise to keep it very simple. You're telling four stories here, okay? Four stories. And, and understand this is like, you know, I want you to, I'm trying to teach you how to fly a prop plane. This is like flying a fighter jet, okay? <laughs> I'm going far with this. And it's the reason because I want you to see what's possible with all of it. Um, uh, anyway, um, so I'm telling them this origin story of my experience with a presentation funnel. Right. And then I realized like, oh my gosh, it's the same process all these people went through and all of them coming to my fat events. Um, but learning it and teaching it is not the same thing as doing it. Right. And so I had to make fun of that because I, I was uncomfortable with that. This is like one of the major reasons I left ClickFunnels. I felt uncomfortable with the fact that I had not actually done a webinar at that point. And, um, and I needed to make fun of it while also bringing out the truth of it. Let's laugh at it together. Okay. Every once in a while, I've had somebody reach out to me. They're like, but Steven, back in that day, you were teaching whatever it is. You hadn't even done one. And I was like, I know. Sucks, right? Super embarrassing, <laughs> right? Uh, anyway, and so I'm going to walk them through. Now, think about this here. I just told, if if the Epiphany Bridge script is a backstory, I just told the backstory, all right, then I hit the my internal and external desires are actually kind of described on this slide. And then I hit a wall. I hadn't actually done the thing and I got a complex. I'm still hitting the wall. And so I had an epiphany and I go and I realize that I need to leave and I have this new plan, right? And as I go and I start executing the plan, right? We go back and forth and back and forth. Now you don't actually finish 
Anyway, I'll, I'll go more into this in the future here. Let me just keep going here on this. Because um, I know we've been going quite a bit here. I need to figure out category king uh, is my space. Yeah, everyone should know, like because I want you to attach to a single market, you should know by name who the category king is. And it's, it'd be very shocking if it was yourself. Okay, very shocking. Okay, know who that category king is. Not that you're not capable of it, but if you haven't created pos- purpose purposeful positioning it's very unlikely to become the category king um just because right uh anyway uh anyway so i wanted to show some examples though of perfect presentation funnels that are not actual full presentation funnels right make it feel it's great again little tiny boom and a lot of you guys came through that a lot of you guys came through the mlm funnel. a lot of you guys came through ofa and by the way this is the last month of secret mlm hacks like and it's Boom, 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 boom. Anyway, so this is the part of the story um, where we hit achievement, kind of like I did here. We're hitting achievement, but now I need to hit transformation. And so I hit transformation in the script. You guys follow me where we are on the actual script, and I'll walk through this more with you guys moving forward as well. Okay, but but I need to hit achievement, and I hit achievement, right? Oh my gosh, look, he hit these things. It's so cool, okay? But now I need to hit transformation. How did it change me? Because it did a lot. And in order to do that, I wanted to bring in Alex Sharfin into the story. I see when you're world changer, have you ever thought of keeping track of all you're doing to see what's actually pushing the needle? And I'm like, no. I do that to alleviate the pressure because I know my content is meaty. Okay. It's very meaty. It's like, like you said, it's like eating Thanksgiving all the time. I, I know that. Um, like, Psh. and what this actually is, is a brain break. All right. Oh my gosh, there's actually only a few things I do that cause revenue at all, which is true. And uh, that's what we were talking about this morning before I went live with you guys, um, what the next steps are. I realized, and this is the tie-in to now the fact that there are three secrets coming up or three habits, as I call them. There's only a few things that I realized uh, when I found these things in these old, dead, rich marketers (laughs) and applied them to today's best-selling tech presentation funnel that it all started working very well. So I took a symbol and I wanted to tie the history with the past. And, um, hey, awesome. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. You like the Alex Sharfin voice? <laughs> Steven, you're a world changer. <laughs> you ever thought of doing the things that you've actually been, or keeping track of the things you do and actually see what's moving the needle? Oh, crap. It's only a few things. Told you. Checkmate, son. <laughs> he loves that. He and I are good friends. Uh, I need to figure out, let's see, being in network marketing, who would you say is the category king for MLMs? Uh, that's for you to say and choose and decide, uh, but usually they're very obvious to name because they're so big. So you might have a category king in MLM under the type of product that you sell. So let's say there's a supplement MLM that's the category king in MLMs, right? Let's say that there is a, I don't know, you know, like there's there's all kinds of MLMs, obviously, right? So I might break it down to the type of product that you're trying to sell as well. That might be another way to pull it down. Um, Okay, so my question for you is, how many guys know you need one of these? Now, the reason I ask this is because I want them to get an invest, a vested interest of what I'm about to go through. Who wants to learn the habits of these rich marketers? I mean, do you think anybody didn't want to? I'm planning the question. And I'm planning the question because as much as I can get them to engage, the more the sales will be. In any way, say or do. Okay, so I need them to say and do a lot. It's the other reason why content is so powerful for selling people because they're engaged with me, right? They're doing things. They're used to making taking action. I was coaching uh, somebody over the weekend and it was a one-on-one thing that I was doing. I usually don't do this that much anymore. It was a one-on-one thing though. And I was telling her, I was like, they have a list of 30,000 people. They get 3 million hits to their blog every single month. They're incredible. They're amazing. But I was doing this one-on-one session with her and I was walking through it and I was saying like, the issue is that your people don't know to open your emails. They don't know to click on your headlines. They don't know. You've never put anything in front of them. Even though you have a blog, like what you're putting out there, she's got a recipe thing. I was like, your product is the recipes. You're not actually publishing in the way that I'm telling you to, even though it looks like you are. You have a blog, you're putting stuff out, but you're not actually publishing. But you don't have any stories. There's no story in anything that you're doing. You need to tell story in every single email, every single headline, every single subject line, every single everything that they click on, it's story, 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 story. Micro commitment, micro commitment, micro commitment. And you walk through and start having them. And that that's, that's anyway, that's why I'm doing this here. It's a micro commitment. So now they're engaged. They just told me I have permission to move forward. Here we go. 
Okay. The critical role each marketer holds while building um, their core presentation funnel. Okay. Now that is a vehicle based headline, which is why I created it that way. The next one is internal. All right. Can I also do this? The truth about what rich marketers study, like their wealth depends on it because it does. Like, oh, if I just knew that thing and studied that thing, I also could do it. That's why I have it be the internal. And then finally is the external here. The dying skill each rich marketer has leveraged to dependently write their own lucrative checks. Like, oh, wait, there's last little skill. It's a resources based thing. This is kind of like a lot of times I treat secret three like the wild card. Um, anyway, um, habit number one, and then we go through it and I anchor it back to when we were talking about this. Um, and I want to paint the scene for them so that the story I tell will be more impactful. I think people are gonna buy more or less, more products or less, more charges or less, taxes are gonna go up or down, right? Distribution channels, up or down, discipline, up or down, down. Number of entrepreneurs, down. And what I'm doing is I'm helping them realize like, here's the reality, but here's also the opportunity. And that one slide does that quite well. Your opportunities are colossal. So then we go into the Dove soap thing. And what epiphany am I causing inside of Dove Soap? Right? What's the promise, I mean headline, of secret number one? The critical role each marketer holds while building their core presentation funnel. So I thought like, I could show my own stuff, which is cool, but it's gonna be even more powerful to take names they all know. It's likely that they've heard some of the names I said before. So let me go find old rich dead marketers and find out what they did in every single campaign so i started studying a lot of campaigns uh sorry i started studying a lot of uh um i mean their campaigns um it's essentially a presentation funnel in every single one of these this ad is very cool by the way you can see it on youtube um <laughs> so i started going through and i tell the story because what am i doing i'm breaking the belief right that you have to know how to do all this stuff he didn't make this actual paper he likely did not go out and choose those ads, these these images here of these women, but he still turned it into a story. Okay, created positioning. Your stories will do best when you can put them into steps. Step number one, and I know I'm going faster, guys, and I know I'm spouting a lot of stuff out, but I just want you to see like where we're going to be taking you. And yes, you can do this too. Okay, um, and I'll, I'll show you guys how we're doing this. Okay, so here's the promise of the entire subject. All right, here's the promise or headline of the entire section. I'm gonna teach you guys the critical role that you hold. And they're like, sweet. Step number one. So I do this and I, I will literally break it down into steps and then I go fill in the slides in between. So I wrote down first they do, they create their market positioning, right? Then they create a story, right? And those are the two things. They create market positioning and story. That's the critical role. You cannot outsource those things. That's why when somebody's like, just build it all for me. I'm like, I can't. Like, I need your input on positioning and story. Have to have you. Can't do it without you. Otherwise, it's my business, not yours. Okay, because I'm going to create it the best way I know. Anyway, so all I do then, and you see the pattern here. I'm going deep on this one. So you're going to see the pattern throughout the rest of these other two as well. Okay, but think about what it is. Like, I want to show them. Like, oh man, I'm going to show my people how how to, I want them to know what the critical role is that these marketers hold while doing the thing that I promised that they need to learn, right? Remember the goal, the goal slide? I'm tying everything back to the goal slide. This is it, right? That goal slide right there. Well, since that's what we're doing here, here's your role in that vehicle, okay? Step number one, market positioning. Step number two, story. So I found a story about market positioning and I found a, a mini story, right? A mini story about market positioning and I found a mini story about story <laughs> from old dead rich guys. And uh, um, anyway, I told the story and then found some cool quotes to support it. Okay, and then now what's the next thing that's gonna happen? If I just came to you and I said, guys, hey, right? Let's say a guy here, I'm like, Merlanda. And I was like, Merlanda, check this out. I found a car that floats on water, so cool. It actually doesn't even touch the water. You're actually hovering above the water. Yeah. What would the first thing you say to me be? What? I don't believe you. And I'm like, no, check this out. First, the way it works is, step number one. Next thing that way it works is this, step number two. And you'd be like, that's still cool, but like, I mean, has anyone actually tried this? Okay, that's what I'm trying to get to. 
Um, you said this does feel a little bit overwhelming, but you are intended to you're intending it to be an overview, right? I'm assuming we start to go through the portal content, going to start uh, filling the gaps, help the process to the re- yes. And I know it's a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot that I'm going through right now. But I just want you to do. I just want you to know, like deep dive wise, why this has worked so well. Okay, your science has holes. <laughs> Doesn't have holes, but uh, there's room for art for sure. Um, so what I want to do at the end of each of these three secrets is I'm going to say, hey, vehicle, internal, external, testimonial. We just went out into the marketplace and we found three people who use presentation funnels in their funnels right, to sell their actual thing. Vehicle-based one, I can't work for me. I sell soap. Well, okay, check it out. She sells soap, right? It can't work for me, right? I sell something that's kind of more expensive. Oh, what's up? These guys sell something that's really expensive. It can't work for me, Stephen. I, 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 you're right. I don't really have the resources to go pull this off. These guys do a $7 a month newsletter and then afterwards sell you something really expensive afterwards on the phone and it's all through a presentation funnel. And they're like, oh, well, I don't have any excuses. I know, right? So then what I'm going to do is recap the aha. I recap the aha. Why did those early clients fail? Because they didn't know, right, how to tell the story. They didn't know uh, market positioning. Okay, that recaps it. So because I'm very visual and I just walked through a whole bunch there, um, it's funny enough, I'm out of paper. I'm going to, uh, uh, here, check this out. Every, the origin story, so each of these four stories here are broken up into this format, okay? This is the format for each of these four stories. First, what you're gonna do is you're going to declare a new truth, meaning tell a headline. Okay, then you're going to tell the story in steps. That's how you tell, um, that way you don't give all the pieces away. Because if you're in the info product space and you're like, hey, if I go, if I go tell all this stuff to you. I just told you all my stuff. You don't need to buy, right? So how do you get around that? You get around that, right? They, I caused the epiphany that they need market positioning and story. Do I actually tell them how to create that? No, right? But now they're like, crap, thanks for teaching me that. So I'm still teaching, but I'm not giving away the goose, right? Um, especially in the info product space, that's extremely true, okay? So anyways, first there's the story, and oh, uh, sorry, then there's a story in steps. Okay, then I'm going to uh, put testimonials in, which are also micro stories. You understand, you're gonna tell like 400 stories. I mean, you, get, you, you tell like the major ones, but there's a lot of mi- micro ones. Then you're gonna restate that headline or truth Okay, I'm gonna restate the headline of the truth and that's kind of it, okay? And so you can see that at a, at a macro level here now that I kind of dove through the micro. I mean, I probably should have started with the macro, okay? But uh, right, I'm tell, I'm declaring it, then I'm like, here's the story. Story, 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 I'm telling it in steps, All right? Step, 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 step. And then, honestly, one thing I have found that, that helps a lot here is I usually toss a quote somewhere in there from somebody who is famous. Um, sometimes I'll open the whole thing with the quote and sometimes I'll put the quote in other places as well. Okay. But there's always a quote in there. You'll notice that as a pattern as well. Okay. Um, now what am I doing is I'm joining the conversation in the head. Okay. But Steve, I I, I get this, but is it going to work for me? I'm like, well, yeah. Right. I restate the truth, market position and story are keystone to any presentation funnel. You have to know how to create them. Well, is that going to work for me in my current scenario? Well, check it out. Testimonial testimonial, testimonial, restatement of truth, right? And then done, okay? So now looking through real fast here, let's go to this next piece here because I don't want to like have this be like a 12 hour thing. I'm just, I want you to understand like from the top level view why this works so well. We didn't even gotten to the close. This is all designable, which is the good news. And if you're feeling frustrated or you're like, holy crap, this is intense. It is intense. And understand I've been doing it for a long time and you don't need to create one this intensity. I'm just trying to show you, I'm trying to show you what we do to go into this so that when you're creating yours, you're going to be like, oh, that's, that's super awesome. Okay. Um, okay. Now, same kind of thing. All right. I'm going to say my statement of truth. I'm going to tell my story and do it in steps. So I, usually I'll wait to drop the step and I'm like, boom. So there it is. Be comfortable with unanswered problems. 
Most people aren't, so they don't do it. Um, step number two, hunt for lucrative solutions. Step number three, uh, there's stuff on stuff here. Uh, create your core offer. And like, okay, building a core presentation offer around a problem is a, cop, uh, a key to any offer. Uh, right, sorry, key to any presentation funnel. But see, will it work for me? Psh, yeah, check out my three testimonials. Testimonial, 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 done. Okay, it's in the same format that I tell the origin story. If you really like what I'm doing in there, I just added a second major story in that one. That's the only reason why it was a little different, All right? Here's the right, then we got the Fiji mermaid hoax. I freaking love the story, it's such a good one. All right, I'm telling the story, telling the story, telling the story, um, right? And then a little micro story, little micro story. And I tell them today's generic marketer, these are really the, the steps. I'm wrapping it up in one slide here. It doesn't create campaigns. And honestly, they got a little lazy because distribution is so easy, All right? Here's usually what people do. And that's like, that sucks, right? That's why people have a hard time with it. Um, then I'm like, but does it work for me? I keep tying everything back to presentation funnel every single time. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. And I'm like, well, yeah, check it out. This guy did it. This guy did it. These people did it, right? And I'm like, check it out. Anyway, then I restate all the truth. And then we actually transition into the actual close itself. Okay. Um, incredible. Keep going. Hope today goes for 10 plus hours like the old days. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Yeah, let's go 12 hours. Miss them Saturdays better than Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely. Um, what I'm going to do, though, I will go a few minutes over just because I want to walk through the stack so you can see what I was doing in here because there's a very simple pattern as well. Um, I know that me scrolling through all these slides visually is kind of hard, but what I'm hoping to do is like share what you think I'm doing and then show you the macro view of how it actually works and show you how simple it really is. Because what we're going to do is... is I I'm going to ask you for very specific inputs in this course. And it's so that when things are being created for you, they can do this kind of stuff, right? They can do this kind of stuff. So then when you walk back through, because don't just take what the funnels, it's, it's your baby, not theirs, right? So they're going to do it the best of their ability, but still go back through and do it a couple times and put it in your voice. And maybe like, you know what, this slide makes more sense in front of that one or whatever. Or if I tell this story, you see what I'm saying? That's your role. That is your role as a marketer. Okay. Um, now, this is one of the easiest transitions ever. And the transition is if all I did, they're called if alls, right? If all I did was model these rich marketers, I got to bring it back to myself. So, and, and, and what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to ask an obvious yes question, right? If all I did was model these rich marketers and I focused on my message and the offer and the campaigns and I, and I delivered it through this core presentation funnel. I mean, it sounds like a lot, but truly though, like that's all I had to do. If all I did was that, do you guys think that this could work for you as well? I go, yeah, I do. This would, right? Let's let's go, let's pull out from being deep. Let's pull you back 30,000 of you. And they go, you know, I, I do think that would work for me. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transition into selling them, but I need their permission to do it. Okay, let me guess, ask you a question right now. How many of you guys feel like this? How many of you guys are just freaking out? You're kind of scared. And some of you guys probably feel like that right now, okay? Which is okay. Uh, totally fine, right? That's growth stress, not de-stress, okay? Um, um, uh, anyway, let me ask you a question though. Like, How many of you guys wish that you could just pull all this stuff off? Uh, let's say that you go off and you pull this off here and you're like, man, Steven, a million dollars a year. Like, I get that. Let's say it's only 10% of that. Let's say you only make 100 grand. Would it still be worth it to you? Heck yeah, it would, right? That would be that would be incredible. Let's say that you barely pull this off, and let's say you're doing like ten grand a month. Would this be worth it? It's still one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. Of course, it'd be worth it. So I want to ask you guys a question real quick. I, I want to see. Do you guys mind if I spend five ten minutes going over like a special offer that we created to help you do all this stuff and actually build out your core presentation funnel? All right, tying it back, tying it back, tying it back. They're like. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh my gosh, that'd be so cool. Very key that you do not move on until they say yes. There's been a few times where they like don't really say anything. So I'm like, I already know this. I'm being serious. Do you mind if I spend five, 10 minutes going over a little bit of an offer that we created for you to help pull this off? 
Once you get them to say yes, then you move forward. This is very key. This is one of the biggest mistakes. I was speaking at an event in Dallas and um, we were sitting back and I spoke and uh, it's actually an MLM conference I was speaking at. There's a thousand people in the room. It's a big conference and I spoke, sat back down and one of the next people to get up, I was watching him and I realized he was pitching, but the audience was like squirming in their chairs. Like it was really funny to watch. We were sitting, you know, far back enough in the room to see that everyone was kind of like it was awkward and i was texting some people who were in there in the room with me and i was like why is this awkward and they said a whole bunch of things and i said yes 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 and i said one of the reasons it's awkward is because he did not ask permission to pitch them that's where this is big it's called offer lab and i'm gonna cast the vision for you here offer lab these are the awards that we have I'm very excited about and just so you understand how rare this is and how cool it is and why this program is so special is because most businesses don't ever do what we are teaching you to do here and we have a lot of people who make a lot of money okay so like three percent of businesses will only ever hit the million right not in our world more than that right anyway so what you're gonna get now what we do here is i'm gonna take the offer okay and yeah, you're feeling totally overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah, totally get it, 100% get it. Um, totally overwhelmed. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Just lean into it, accept that it's all good, and know that the purpose of the program is to eventually pull this kind of thing out. You're not you're not expected to pull this off right now, right? It, it, it took me four days just to create these slides, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, when you created the Purple Offer Live on those Saturday trainings, did you have in, did you have in mind or a list of questions you wanted to ask that you can make sure you hit and collect the correct inputs for each secret or did you just riff it live? Mm -hmm. No, usually this is all like massively choreographed. Okay, oh, uh, anyway. Okay, so in this phase here, let's say that I've got this offer, okay? And let's say I've got, um, um, let's just say offer lab, okay? Uh, so what I had on my whiteboard was I had offer lab and then I had the first piece and the next piece and the next piece and the next piece and the next piece. And then I was like, cool, that's like the core thing right there. And I was like, let's make a fact, let's make a fast action bonus. Let's take some sexy elements of this and I want them to know that like how powerful this truly is. You know what? How crazy it would be if we gave them some access to the campaign team. Holy smokes. By the way, let's give them definitely a ticket to the next offer mine. By the way, let's give them a ticket to my content machine live, which I'm not sure on the details on that yet, but I'll tell you later. Um, right? And I was like, let's give this. Let's, and that's the fast action bonus, which is super cool. Right? That That's a huge deal. And so I was like, you know, take action now. You also get these things. So you have to understand the pattern of what I'm about to go through here is first I'm going to say, what else do you need? Okay, then I tell the thing, but I need to tell a story. I'm gonna give you this, but I tell a micro story, and then I add it back to the stack. Okay, those are like the five steps. Step number one is I'm gonna say, what else do you need? It's this that you need. Here's the story on the value of on why it's so powerful. Now let's add it back to the stack. Now let's go back to what else do you need? You need this and then this. Here's a micro story back to the stack. What else do you need? This and then this and then back to the stack, right? And every time I go back to the stack, I also read everything be beforehand, okay? Boom, 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 boom. Next, boom, 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 boom. Next, right? And then, then I, anyway, let's get to that point right now. Okay, first you're gonna get Offer Lab. Like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. I'm gonna teach you how to do all this stuff. Right, and you're gonna learn these things and you're gonna learn how to actually go create what I'm literally walking you through right now, okay? Um, you'll be able to, you'll be able to get rid of. This is a big, cool slide right there. This sells the benefits. Chocolate crew, what's up, chocolate crew? <laughs> right, this is the first time I go through the stack. I just really briefly said, this is what you're gonna get. I walked through these pieces real fast. I don't tell them everything that's in it. I say what it is and I go super fast through it and I go, this is it and it's the ten thousand dollar value okay because it a million percent is right then we go to the what else do you need you know what because of that i want you to come to my three-day live event what else do you need i want you to get my three-day live event right and and to briefly get tell a story about it i'm actually gonna right walk through and say hey day one is this day two is this day three is this in fact we were planning offer lab right before i got on this live with you guys and by the way we're gonna do the famous asset day where you guys are gonna get to drive around and um um this year we'll have everybody come to the same spot, but we're still gonna do cool things with limos. Anyway, it'll be awesome. Okay, then we have the stack. 
where I'm gonna bring it back again, okay? Every once in a while, I just go straight into the next thing, which is what I did here. Okay, then we got boom, boom, boom. All I'm doing is I'm introducing the next piece in there, and then I do, I kind of recap because I haven't gone back to the stack for a while. So I go, because I haven't been to the stack for a while, I need to go back to it. This is where a lot of people feel goofy. Like, are you serious? I got to read it all again? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was standing on a uh, two comic book backstage and I was teaching for, it was like a four hour session. And I was like, how many guys feel awkward doing the stack? Like most of the hands went up. And I said, keep your hand up, but just like bend it back just a little bit. This is actually a trick to help you get over it. Um, drop the elbow a little bit. Okay, and all you're gonna do here, it's actually on the wrist here. So you're actually gonna move the wrist back just a little bit and kind of push your head forward a little bit. And then just act like the most deadly spider on planet Earth is on your cheek and just, just get it. Just, there it is, right there, just get rid of it. <laughs> okay, and, and it was a little offensive to some of them, but like I needed to cause the shock. Like get over it, okay? This sells, it makes a lot of money. It made ClickFunnels 10 million bucks, right? This is how they had ClickFunnels born with no funding, the stack, okay? Uh, so anyway. Uh, so we, uh, uh, I so I tell the little micro story, and I'm going to the next thing, right? I'm going to the very next thing. I wanted them to know that why the direct response, <clears throat> excuse me, why the direct response marketing system is so huge, right? So I'm telling a micro story about that. What if we just gave you that? Oh my gosh, that'd be so cool, right? Adam Smith, don't learn how to said, don't learn how to do everything. Do what you're amazing at, right? And I'm gonna bring in because it worked really well. The next part, <laughs> I hit a little capitalist pig on a shirt right there. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> um, those little Easter eggs throughout. Um, right? I never seen anyone make a million bucks doing it all. Solopreneurs is a myth. Then I want to know, like, look, this took a lot of effort on my part to go figure out. All right. And then I go back and say, what about the next piece in the process? What if we just built your funnel for you? Introducing core funnel. Oh my gosh, right? This is how it works. And it's been a while since I've been through the stack. Okay. It's kind of like having all these people do this for you. Been a while through the stack. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to recap the stack again. I'm going to say, here we go. Here's what you're going to get. And this whole game of the actual close of you, you have to understand, like, marketing is the act of presenting an offer. I'm sorry. Marketing is the act of changing beliefs with the intent of a sale. I have done that to death on C, on the origin story, wherever it is, right? On the origin story, story one, two, and three. That is That's marketing. Now I need to go to... Uh, uh, right now I need to go to selling. What I'm doing right now is selling. Selling is the act of presenting an offer and overcoming objections. So that's all I'm doing right now is I'm presenting the offer in order and I'm adding in the value to overcome price objections. And I do little micro ones in there like, right? This is like getting my whole team working for you guys for free, which is awesome. Who else has gone through this? A lot of people. This is the process. This is who goes through it, okay? Um, and then I go back to stack it again. I say, well, it's gonna do to over deliver, all right? This is where I transitioned and I'm like, how many guys are so excited about this right now? This is just so awesome. Like, I mean, the fact that I was going to build funnels is, is pretty sexy, right? So you're all getting that, right? It's just super cool. So we have, then I was like, at events, this works quite well. I don't always do this if I'm not an event, but at events, because they're with you, it's easy to add an entire additional offer as the fast action bonus. We'll go through that more in the future here. Alrighty. Then you're going to get this. And I told, I told the micro story about this hotel, right? They have tossed the bike in the bush. Then you're gonna learn this. Content Machine Live, this is what you're gonna get. Um, now I need to join the conversation in their head, or if not, then I need to place a question in their head. Um, what do you guys think about like cats? I don't care, but now you're all thinking about cats. That's exactly my point. Questions are powerful. If you're not thinking about something, I'm gonna easily hijack your noggin by telling you what to be thinking about by just asking a question. Steve, what happens after all my funnels are built? Is it gonna be successful or am I gonna get jacked, <laughs> right? It's a lot of, sort of, a lot of done funnels out there that are, you know, never made any money. So I'm going to hijack the brain by asking a question. You need more traffic. I'm gonna tell you what you need, okay? When you're done with this, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna start, uh, I'm sorry, when you're actually working with the funnel team, the other thing you're gonna start doing is actually start working with the campaign team because that's what makes it actually successful. And again, I know this is a lot, you guys, and the program's big. Just go bite-sized chunks, that's all it is. One step at a time, one step, don't worry about step 97, worry about step one. Don't even think about step two till you have number one done, okay? All right, then we go through and, uh, um, and I give brief stories which I did, brief stories, that's the pattern, brief stories on every single one of the next line items. And I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna stack it again here. 
All right, brief stories, brief story, brief story, brief story. And I stack it and say, so this is everything you'll get if you act today, which is awesome. So what that means is everything that you got in Offer Lab plus the bonus value, which is ridiculous. You actually have a total of $81,452. Now what I need to do at this point, <laughs> over the top, yeah. What I need to do at this point is I need them to know that it's worth 81 grand. If it's not worth 81 grand in their mind, they're gonna have a hard time, right? Now I have had many people actually offer me for real in real life a million bucks to build a funnel and I turned them down, <laughs> okay? I turned down Tony Robbins for a funnel <laughs> because I knew I was gonna have to manage it. It was the exact same thing. Like I've had a lot of hate mail around that. Like <laughs> they don't understand the context though. They, 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 they look at the face value of the story. And they're like, what? There's a lot more that would have happened if I had taken that on. So I didn't. Um, same thing. Okay, so I want to price anger it to things that they're familiar with in life. You understand you don't get attention. You just align with where their attention is. So their attention is probably college. I'm not going to steal from What else could you spend around 81 grand on? You could go to the University of Michigan and get an average of 56 grand a year. That's where you're going to get paid. That sucks, right? Uh, you, uh, and now I'm going to drop a little testimonial in there, right? Kirk Tompkins comes in and he's made a lot of money from Offer Lab. <laughs> he, was, he was part of the first crew a year ago. He's made a lot of money from Offer Lab, which is awesome. Brilliant individual. Um, was that worth 81 grand? And I'm going to bring that up because I need them to say yes. Of course it is. And so on stage, I'm going to be saying things like, you have to understand that I'm trial closing just with my inflections. Was that worth $81,452? See how, what I did my... Okay. Of course it is. That's a finality statement. If I said, of course it is, that's a question. Okay. If I go in and at the end of my sentences, I start saying, How's it? Uh, uh, and I start saying, now we are going to talk about funnels. Every sentence like this means that there's more coming after each pause. So no one cheers but it's actually trial close. Hey, I know that's annoying, but like, you understand? <laughs> this is an art, baby. It's a science, but there's also a lot of art behind it as well. So what I'm going to say on this is like, I'm I'm going to, like, I used to do this on the, on the doors when I was a door-to-door -door salesman. Um, you hate the bugs that are in your house, right? And I'm nodding without them even nodding. And I will nod the whole freaking conversation. And by the end, I'm not even asking them a question. They're just nodding with me, <laughs> okay? I used to do that a lot. It's one of the funnest tricks. Do it today, I dare you, okay? Do it today. Walk around in every conversation you have, somebody just start nodding. Be like, isn't that awesome? That's so cool. You can even have like bad news. Oh man, the dog got ran over, right? And you keep going like this and people, it's actually a trial close. And the more times I can get you to say yes, okay? before I ask for the big yes, which is 25 grand, the easier that yes will be. And I'm just gonna keep doing that, okay? And so when I ask a question like this that I want a specific response to, it's, was that worth, and I'm gonna shoot my hand up, was that worth $81,452, right? I'm gonna nod my head with it. And so I did it with my voice, I did it with my hands, I do it with my, with my head, and I am getting the response that I want, okay? Was that worth 452, uh, sorry, was that worth $81,452? Of course it was, right? <laughs> this matters. I used to think it was actually really stupid. <laughs> okay, until I started watching Russell and all these other people making it rain from stage or on a webinar. And I was like, dang, man, I got to learn this inflection thing and just start practicing it. Uh, publishing has been one of the greatest grounds for me to publish this. All right, sorry, practice that. Okay, here's for some perspective. And I saw, now I want to belittle the price again that I'm about to go ask them. It cost me, uh, those are the actual prices. I mean, that and some change, but that's the ballpark. It cost me 11 grand to build that funnel. It cost me 20 grand for, that was a very expensive funnel. Okay, it cost me 15, me, still, now, professional funnel builder, okay? It cost me that for that one, it cost me that for that one. It cost me, it's, it's a lot, okay? Anyway, but Steve, can't I just do it on my own? And I was like, how can I fight that? Because some people are gonna ask that. I'm like, yeah, but that's the funnel from secret MLM hacks, okay? 
if you want to and be a freaking nerd. That took me a whole day to go through and design and think through all the elements of the pieces, let alone the sales message and the offer and the campaign that puts it out there. It's like, oh, just let us do it. Just let us do it, right? And so I'm making fun of that a little bit. What is one core funnel worth to you? 5K a month? And I'm saying that because I want that. I'm asking a question to hijack the brain. Okay, 5K a month, $10,000 a month, maybe more. How much would you pay for one funnel? This one right here cost me $10,000, like I was telling you. How many guys would pay $10,000 for this funnel right now? Right, and they're like, oh, let's add some perspective here. This makes $8,000 a month, and I don't do anything. <laughs> Uh, it's all organic, in fact, which is kind of a mistake. We're going to start turning on paid ads. But it's the reality, though. That's what I'm saying. They're really powerful. Okay. So I'm going to go again, and I'm going to price anchor and let them know why it's easily worth 81 grand. Right? You can see why people are offering 100000 or more just to set up a single core funnel for them. That's a real number. That's a real number, right? Anyway, again, and I'm going to hit it again. Like This is why it works so well. This is why a, there were some people that stood up before I was even done speaking. I hadn't even price dropped. I think I was at this one. Um, it was one of these right here. I hadn't even done a price drop. I hadn't even told him how to buy yet. And a guy stood up and he walked to the front table. And then it was like this waterfall. Okay, But it's because I'm hitting it on multiple angles. Okay, If all this did was get you the Capitals Pick Award, 100 grand, would it be worth $81,000? Like, and that's what I said. Yeah, we call that a profit. Right? Right? Belittling it. Um, uh, or removing the fear, I should say. If all OfferLab did was get you your core offer professionally built by my agency, would it be worth 81 grand? Yes. People have offered far more than that, and I've turned down many people for much more money. Right? Would it be, if all OfferLab did was get you take cashless, needless skill sets off your plate, uh, I had a typo, <laughs> off your plate so you can make moves like real marketers do, would it be worth 81 grand? Totally. All right? School, that's about how much I spent on my bachelor's degree and uh, did not make that much money from it. <laughs> okay, um, Capitalist Pig Path, I remind them of where we're trying to take them. So you can see why this is a huge bargain and I'm not going to steal from you the $127,000 that it takes to become a professional. You can become a professional much faster in this game by doing offer lab. So again, what you're going to get, and I'm going to stack it again, what you're going to get and I'm gonna go through every single thing in that stack. And I'm gonna say the price, I'm gonna say, or the value, and I'm gonna say the total value at the end. And I say, guys, getting access to OfferLab is simple. All it is, when you feel ready, stand up and you point up and you take a step back. Where'd you learn about inflection? I, this is my life, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> all over the place. Uh, anyway, uh, um, I'm gonna say, when you're ready, Stand up. You guys remember how many times I did that? It's because the audience needs permission. They don't just do it inherently. You actually have to teach them how to buy. Um, there are some people who all they did was screen recorded themselves buying their own product. Uh, you know, they fuzzed out credit card numbers. Um, that was it. And then they took that video and put it on the order page and it like doubled their conversions. Okay, you think it's obvious that people know how to buy from you. They usually don't know how to buy from you. So what you'll see me do here is this is a transition. Okay, I'm through the stack. I'm through the price justification part. I now need to like, if there's paper cup going here, I now need to go in and I need to tell them how to buy. And so I do it a lot of times and I'm still gonna join the conversation in their head, pull the, the devil's advocate spawn of Satan, you know, objections out and say that multiple times in multiple angles with multiple steps. And I do that because people need to hear it. And it's not, it's not that it's not that anyone's dumb. What you're doing is you're trying to say in multiple steps, multiple ways, multiple angles, you have my permission to get up. Uh, because people don't want to be rude. And they certainly don't want to feel like they're the only ones standing up in a room full of 600 people, right? That, that feels awkward. They feel all their eyes on their back, right? Like, oh. And so you're trying to let them know, like, so what I usually do is when I see the first person get up is I'll point at them and say, that person gets it. Okay. And now people are like, oh, license. Thank you. Permission. Okay. Um, uh, right. Then I said, access off lab is simple. We're all we're asking for instead of $81,000 is the 24997 Okay. And all you're going to do is stand up walk to the front right here and grab this packet and I was holding this packet and I don't have the order from on me right now but I, I this was hiding up on the podium the whole time 
I said, you're going to come grab this, and I hold it up, and take the flap, and you're going to open up the front flap, and there's going to be an order form in there. All you're going to go do is fill out, all we're asking for is a $2,000 non-refundable deposit to get started. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. And uh, um, all you're going to do is take that, close this pamphlet, walk, you know, uh, stay, stay, stay there, fill it out there up at the tables, and then they'll give you the pink slip back. And you'll walk back to the back. The mistake I made is that I should have had an offer lab box with me up there on stage. I wish I had done that. Um, it would have walked people through the sale a little bit more. What they'll do is they'll hand you back the box, and you're also going to get a golden ticket to take a, pic, uh, take a picture with me at the end here. Okay, does that make sense? So all you're going to go do, what you need to do right now, so I, I said it there, I'm going to say it again. Stand up, get the info packet, take out the commitment form, choose your form of payment, hand in your form and deposit it up front and then walk to the back with your pink slip and you're going to get a really cool offer lab box with some of my favorite marketing books, the workbook for the course. Uh, we got a lot of gifts for you in this as well, but things are also uh, um, uh, central for the course. Steve, a payment plan. We do. Stand up, get the impact pack at the front, right? And, and like, you see what I'm doing here on this? I say it again and again. And then I want to give some context for them. By the end of this year, I will have spent $150,000 on personal coaching. Just me, okay? Which is true, okay? So I was like, you're, you, you're gonna access to tons of these people and, and like the basics of what they teach for a fraction of that. Like it's ridiculous who's coming in to do stuff for you guys inside this program over this year. It's awesome, okay? Anyway, I like you, owe it to my message, only work with the best, okay? And... um and now you'd be introduced to the, the all, you know, the, their genius at a fraction of the cost. It's only, well, all we're asking for is $24,997. Fill out the $2,000 non refundable commitment for deposit right now up front. And I go back, right? I say, stand up, come back up to the front, and I walk through it again. Why is it that price, Stephen? Well, let's see what else you could go get for $25,000. Now, this is a, a technique to use when you are selling something. Actually, anything. I've used this at lots of price points. Find, you know, it's really fun. Just go to Google and type in your price point, and you'll get lots of random crap that you could buy on Google for that price. And that's what I go help them understand. Um, that way, the question isn't, am I going to do this? It's, what else could I spend that money on? And it takes the pressure off of whether or not they're going to go do it. You could get an aimless employee, right? You could buy a bowling alley thing, you could buy a picture of this guy that he painted and signed. You could buy a chair in the shape of a manta ray. <laughs> you could buy a labeling thing. And I'm, I'm, the way I'm saying it is very much similar to how I said it on there. You could buy this because I want them to understand like, when you go to a store, how often do you not buy something? Just spend some of your money over on this thing and I'll help you get where I'm, you need, want, where you're trying to go, right? And when you can do that, and you honestly know that what you're delivering is amazing. I do, right? You can make statements like this and they're like, dang, this is, okay, I get it. I say, or you can get argu arguably the best millionaire maker program ever assembled, okay? Um, 24,997, stand up, get the packet, right? Think about how cool it's gonna be when I hand you your Titans of Industry Award, which is a million bucks. Only 3% of the marketplace does that, okay? Right, and, and we're not asking for lots of cash. We're not asking for a million dollars for you to make a million dollars. We're asking for much less. It's actually 2.4% of the million dollars you just made. 2.4%. Okay. That's less than what Stripe and PayPal charges you. Right. And I'm helping them understand that in context. Like you understand what you're doing is you're putting context inside of the brain and why it works so well. Okay. Um, um, anyway, so I go it again. No more reason to get started. Steven, I'm not a marketer. I know. <sighs> That's why we're doing this, okay? okay. Will I fill out class? Uh, no, it's for all stages, right? I, why am I saying that? Because people are gonna ask that. Now, how many guys are thinking like, but Steve, I'm already a funnel builder. I'm, a, I'm already a presentation. I already have a presentation funnel, right? Because I, I need to address that side of the room again of addressing the people who don't have one. But some of you guys have one, which is fine. I'm like, this was crazy. I did not expect this. But when it happened, I was like, I have to put this in the closes, okay? This is the actual check that he handed me. Actually, I have the note from him right here. That note that I took a screenshot of, this is it. Yeah, they're right there on the side. <laughs> okay, uh, it's just awesome to have Kerry Woodward inside the program, appreciate that. But I was telling him what the offer was and he was like, holy crap, dude. And he's been in, uh, I mean, he's part of the brainstorm of all the things that we've been selling at ClickFunnels. And so if I had to have him excited about this, 
He was like, dude, that's a big need. I was like, I know it's awesome. Okay. <laughs> anyway. So then I go in. I, well, he knows funnels. That's It's not about the funnel. You understand? Like I'm helping become a real marketer. That's why it's so valuable here. Like, oh, that's awesome. Okay. Um, remember, this is where we're taking you. And it works if you're in all these different things. And you might be thinking, but Steve, I already have this. But Steve, I do. And I'm just really fast spot checking conversations in the brain. Do I need this? Remember, presentation funnels are the ones that makes the numbers work. Remember, that's the one that Russell said, but I already have one. Yeah, many others do as well. And many others have in the past when they've gotten the program as well. I don't have an idea. You're in the right place. You're actually in a great place. Um, sometimes it's easier, right? If, you, if you're just starting out, which I know a lot of you guys are as well. Okay. And so what am I going to go do? Back through the call to action. And by this time, the room was so loud, I could barely hear myself think. I know you guys remember that. Like, it was loud. I'm glad they didn't turn music on. I kept going, right? And I said, hey, remember, it's it's only $24,997. I'm not hiding that price. Some people try to hide the price. Don't hide the price. Be forward about the price. I'm proud of the price. I'm proud of selling. Selling is a beautiful thing. You should love selling. Okay. Stand up for the front and I walk through the same thing again. You're going to open it up and this is what you're going to get. And I walk through the stack again. First, you're going to get the entire Offer Lab course. You're going to get Offer Lab intensive event with me, the 12 months coaching program with all the stuff in there. Then you get the, pro- the actual um, uh, direct response marketing systems. Uh, then you get the core offer. Then you're going to get this. Then you get this. Right? And it goes through and I say, total of that $81,000. We're not asking for this or that today. We're only asking for $24,997. If you want it and you know it's right for you or if you have the smallest inkling, stand up. And I point up again. And, I, and I, you'll see me. I know I'm an animated speaker on stage, but I will bend my knees and I'll say, stand up like I'm standing up. Stand up and I point down the hall. Come down and walk to the front. And um, uh, a lot of you guys didn't see me do this kind of stuff because you were at the front, which is fine. That's great. And there's going to be this form in there. And this is what it looks like. And I'm walking through all aspects of the sale multiple times. I probably spent 20 minutes doing that. Okay, Just pay the $2,000 non-refundable deposit now. You choose painful or that you need financing. That's fine. I get that. Okay. Then when you get started during the break and I add more to the offer, like it gets sexier. What? You're going to get this golden ticket, which I do think I had up there with me. And what that is, is you're going to grab this ticket. And I was, it was crazy, man. That, that line was wrapped around the corner. I did not. Anyway, that's cool. Um, look at all these other people getting pictures with me. A lot of them are from Offer Mine from last year. A lot of them are from Offer Lab itself. Um, anyway, um, so if you know this for you, stand up, come to the front, right? Come get the packet. Remember, this is all the things that you're getting. And I kept going and going. And this is the slide that I left it on. I wanted to leave it on a final call to action slide of what's available, of what we have for them, of what it is. And that's what I left it up. And I said, thank you so much. I appreciate this. We are going to take the next uh, 15, 20 minutes here. Uh, I turn the time back over here to um, Devon. I appreciate the time. Guys, thanks so much. I'll look, I look forward to seeing you as part of Offer Lab. Come stand for the front, grab this thing, and we'll see you guys uh, after lunch. And I waved and I walked off the stage. And what I did is I told them to leave that slide up. Leave the slide up. Kick the music hard. There needs to be, you understand, like when the doors open for an event, it needs to be loud enough that they have to speak up a bit, quite a bit, to have a face-to-face conversation with someone that far away from them. The music, they need to feel it in the chest. You're creating an environment. You're creating this thing, okay? And you're creating this this cool scenario. And anyways, it's very choreographed. And that's like, that's funny. That's why I kind of laugh when some people are like, well, I'm going to do an event. And they're like... I don't know, come speak about whatever you want to. And I'm like, so, okay, you don't know your own offer then. Or you don't know how to sell it. Or anyway. Okay. Whew. Cool. Yeah. So fast, fast 35,000 foot recap. <laughs> okay. I'm going to tell a story. Oops. About the topic on how I got in there. I'm going to tell another story addressing their product-based beliefs. I'm going to tell another story addressing their ability-based beliefs or internal. Right? Then I'm going to tell another story all about the resources or external. And then I'm going to do the pitch. The pitch is very simply inside of a format. The, f- the pitch is very simply a format where I'm just saying like the first thing. Right? I'm saying, what do you need? That. And now after I have the permission to pitch them, here's a story about it. Let's put it on the stack. What else do you need? How about this? Cool. There's a story. Let's add it on the stack. What else do you need? This. Cool. Tell a story. Add it on the stack. That's all you're doing. And you go back and you tell them the story throughout the whole time. Whole time. Whole time. And then you can have fun with fast action bonuses and all that stuff. And the closes, you're just trying to help them realize that it's worth more than you're charging, which this 
is, <laughs> right? So anyway, is that helpful to see? I'm going back over to the comments here real quick. Um, yeah, I used to nod when selling car audio systems. <laughs> I love it. Where did you learn about the inflections thing? Um, I will do my best to always tell you where I learned stuff. But some of it, you have to understand, I'm just in it. And it's it's my jam, right? And it's what I do all the time. This is my sport. Um, it's my sport. And so sometimes I don't know. Sometimes it's just, you know, proximity is power. And so I'd go hang around these groups. And you see, some of it is that I would just be around them and they would teach. Others of it is that I'm, I'm like hyper observant. It's where some of my ADHD tendencies come out. Okay, I'm, I'm hyper observant, and uh, so some of it I just learned and tossed in. Um, I'm literally okay. Uh, uh, so, but I, Merlandra, I will always try to tell you though where those things are coming from. Childers chunks is one of the things I've used. Look up John Childers, um, the perfect webinar script. Go to perfectwebinarscript.com and grab that there. Super awesome. But what I'm trying to do here with you guys is help you understand that you don't. It is a lot of work to create that, right? It's a, I'm not going to lie, it's a lot. The thing you're responsible for, let me bring this all the way back so that it pulls the pressure off. The thing you're responsible for is you're responsible for the message, the offer, and the campaigns. Part of the message is creating the mess, the market positioning. Who do you want to sell? How much do you want to get paid, right? Then as we transition into offer, it's like, well, what are the issues they're having on the customer journey? What could I go give to them, right? What, what could I deliver? How much did that cost me to deliver? And am I willing to do it at that price? Maybe I'm not, that's fine, raise the price, right? And then campaigns, right? So then when we, when we have these two pieces done, the message and the offer, what we're gonna have for you guys, we got this cool input, we're gonna go dump it over into the, to us, Austin and I, and we're gonna run through those pieces with you guys, okay? And then what we'll do is, uh, so we run through those pieces with you guys, and then what we'll do is uh, I'm gonna transition focus with you so that you start focusing on the campaign, okay? Because the funnel can seriously look like garbage and do a great campaign and you'll make a lot of money, okay? Um, uh, so much of this, uh, my husband learned from, yeah, Bo Sin in his mastermind classes. We understood the process. We went through it a few years ago. However, now it makes more sense and I feel more confident with the vehicle funnels and offer lab. Thank you, Steve. Super excited for the year ahead. It's going to be awesome, guys. I'm very, very pumped about it. I'm literally finalizing my webinar today for tomorrow. This could not have been better timing. Awesome. Very cool. And I'm going to keep doing, like my role in this is to spot check on deep levels like this so that it's kind of its own mini master class we'll keep adding to. Thanks. Totally get it. My husband learns the same way. I've been listening to your old podcast versus your new ones watching <laughs> how I do Facebook lives on Instagram realizing I need to grow one way or another in this area it's awesome and you guys this is such a fun journey when you realize that failure is not real failure is made up failure is fake all right I don't lose I've never lost but I have learned right so when you start looking at that you're like dang like failure is not real so because I've launched some of those early funnels that didn't work I did create stuff though, and I would take things from it and it would make me launch the next one faster and make me launch the next one faster and the next one faster, okay? Anyway, um, uh, I just wrote down five awesome, would it be worse analogies to improve my offer? Hey, that's awesome. Those are like magic, man. Ah, oh, those are gold. I absolutely love those. One thing that might be valuable for you guys to do as well is I will make sure that I put the pitch that sold this, the actual video, we will put that in Offer Lab so you guys can see that. I think that's valuable. We'll put it alongside this video. So we, I can't give you all these slides, you understand? But you're gonna get your own slide deck with this stuff. Plus, I mean, you're seeing them. So, and I walked through the psychology behind all these pieces with it. And so what we'll do is that we'll make sure those pieces are in there so you guys can check them out. Um, I'm very, very, very nervous. I'm gun shy of the death by information thing. So we'll put this in there and strategically, I'm trying to place things in there so that it's not too much stuff for you. And if you need it, then watch it. If you don't, don't watch it. Okay. Um, um, and we'll start rifling through these inputs soon and be awesome guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, it's been a bunch of fun. Uh, Steve, excited to be here. Wanting to learn more about the campaign pieces. Looks like that's the secret sauce. Yeah, it is. It's, it is. And 100% we'll, uh, we'll get there, which is exciting. So uh, I have a lot on that already for you. There's actually a lot in that for you as well in the members area. This whole week, just focus 
on module one. Okay, just focus on module one. Just do that that one part. Um, they all build on each other. Okay, they all build on each other. So, in fact, before you even dodge into module one, I would say who, who how much you want to get paid? Who do you want to serve? And once you kind of have that idea, you know, with that context, when you do module one, very powerful. Um, I'm also a pirate. <laughs> nice. Uh, if you're narrowing down your list of who you want to sell and say you're down to three avatars, what would your final question be to that? One, fastest to bank cash. Two, most pain-free customers. Or three, biggest red ocean. Um, so very good questions on that. I love the question. I honestly believe... <sighs> You could do all three and just have it be a qualifier. You know what I mean? I sell MLMers who also know ClickFunnels. Right? That's like a filter on my market. I'm selling the MLM space when they also, it's like that Venn diagram how they cross over, that little bleed in in the middle. That That's who I'm selling. I'm not selling just MLM. I'm not just selling ClickFunnels for the MLM thing. Uh, I'm selling the bleed over. Um, thank you for the last few hours, brother. Fire it up. Titans of Industry Ward, here we come. Boom, bam. Absolutely love it. All right, guys. Thanks for being on here. Really appreciate it. Get used to me doing these kinds of things. That is my role with this, but I'm also looking 30,000 of you to see how you're behaving with it to make sure we also spot check everything. Um, we'll get more details to you uh, both on Offer Lab, on My Content Machine Live, on um, uh, the inputs for the funnel team, because uh, I want to make sure that you understand the next steps with that. The audibles that Colton, I'm sorry, <laughs> I saw you at my peripheral. <laughs> the audibles that Austin is doing. Um, that is meant to be more of an inputs audible, not necessarily a funnel audible. We'll do funnel audibles with you guys, but that's like step million, right? What we want you to do is focus on the inputs, on the questions, the workbook. Focus on the questions on the workbook and what you're having, like what Austin's doing is a fast spot check of those things. Focus on it with that. That's why we changed the title to an inputs audible, not necessarily a funnel audible, okay? Because we want you to have a funnel, obviously. So we're gonna go build that first and we'll have you go do those inputs first there. So anyways, get rich my friends.